चंद्र सर चंद्र सर ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಸೋಮ ನೀವು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಸರ್ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ 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 ಸ್ಟೋಸ್ ಚಂದ್ರಸ ಅವರ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಯಾವ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದು ಸ್ಟೋಸ್ 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 ಸಿಸಿಆರ್ ಸಿಸಿಆರ್ ಹಾ ಹಾ ಅವರು ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಶಿವು ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾ ಮಾತಾಡೋದು ಶಿವು ಶಿವು ಸರ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ನಾನು ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಚೆಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಹೋಗಿರಿ ಹಾ ಸರಿ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ರೂಪಕ್ ಸರ್ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಸೋಮ ಸರ್ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಸೋಮ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಮೂವತ್ತಿದ್ದಾವಲ್ಲ ಮೂವತ್ತಿ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಮೂವತ್ತಿದೆ ಮೂವತ್ತಿದ್ದಾವೆ ಹಾ ಸರ್ ಸರ್ ಹೇಳಿ ರೂಪಕ್ ಸರ್ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ರೋಹಕ್ ಸರ್ ಶಿವಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಸರ್ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಹಾ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಕಾಣಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಕ್ಲೈಮೇಟ್ ಸಿನಾರು ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಮೂವ್ ಆಗ್ತಿದಾವೆ ಆಗ್ತಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಓಕೆ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋಮು ಮಾತಾಡಿದ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಕಳಿಸ್ತಿದಲ್ಲ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಶೇರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಓಕೆ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಗ್ತಿದೆ
Mr. Somsekar. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning. Am I, am I audible? Yes, yeah, sir. You are audible, sir. Yeah. Raman sir joined? Uh, not yet, sir. He told he will join. Most of our DDs, DDRs also have joined, I think. Yes, already joined, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then exactly at 1030, we'll start. Uh, sure, sir. Sure. Somsekar. Sure, sir. We'll start, sir. Okay. No yeah. Yes, sir. So, whomever joins, let them join. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thanks. Okay. okay. Yes. Sir. So, I'll be waiting, Dr. Okay. Sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Sir. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Welcome, welcome to this. Good morning. Shall I share you your slide, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, I, I can I, see. Just uh, one minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sabrish. Sabrish. Okay. Sir. Isn't that a remote? Isn't that a remote? Visibility is small. I was thinking about that. Oh, is so it? I was asking my son whether he can correct it. Okay. Yeah. Your voice is clear, sir. No problem. Is it clear? Yes, yes it's very clear, sir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Just a minute, just a minute. No, I was asking him, so I was away from that. Okay. Right. Okay, no problem. Now yes. you can make yes. it. Just we can because see. He was asking so many things. I could not make it out. Okay, okay. So he was helping me. Yes, yeah. yes. I'll share yes. your slide so you can uh, see once. Yeah. So is it visible, sir? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is visible. No problem. Yes. Absolutely Sorry. no problem. I will go to the next slide. Yeah. Next Actually, slide. Uh, at that uh, irrigation one and subsequent two slides, three slides, you have got uh, uh, animation. I yeah, think, animation uh, is there, sir. I will play now. You can see it once. Okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, I take some time. To yes, get yes. That. Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just. Ah, this slide. Yeah. You have animation. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. That is no one. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Next slide also same kind, sir. No, mm. uh, there is no uh, different okay, one. Okay. 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 Very good. Very good. Yes. And this is the next one, sir. Again. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yes. 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 Yeah. And this is the next slide, sir, of yours. Yeah. yeah. And this is the next slide. So is it visible, no, sir? Yeah, it is visible. Yeah. Yes. It's the yes, end of the slide. Yeah. Venkatraman, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Fine, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, very nice. I'll stop is... sharing the slides, sir. No. Okay. Okay. When we, we start, we can have this. Sir. No problem yes. on that. Yes, sir. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Is it face is visible? 
सर गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर डेनियल गुड मॉर्निंग सर वेरी नाइस वेरी नाइस टू सी यू सर सो हाउ आर यू फाइन सर फाइन वेरी गुड वेरी गुड सो वेरी गुड सर व्हाट इज द रेनफॉल व्हाट व्हाट इज द रेनफॉल यू हैव रिसीव आफ्टर द जनवरी रेन Is it some problem? I think he got because... disconnected, sir. I think. Oh, uh... he got disconnected. Okay. Yes. Because... Uh, actually, sir, they have sent in rainfall data. January they have received a rain. No, no. Sir. After that, sir, they have received anything? February there is no rain, and uh, March also there is no rain. Environment, sir. Oh, I saw your slide. Yeah, yes, sir. yes. Sir. I, I was thinking that uh, yeah. only Chittoor area has received the yeah. rainfall. Uh, that too, in some parts, sir. Not to all the zones. Yeah, one location it has received sir, Koppa and Sringeri, and uh, in uh, at the two kilometers they are not received the rain, sir. Oh, yes, see. yes. So far, how many are dying? Around thirty-five, sir, including our colleagues. Oh, I see. Thirty-five, sir. Yeah. So, Dr. Yeah, Sina, anyway, ten thirty, we will start. Uh, good By morning, the time, uh, Dr. Sindil. Sir, good morning, sir. How are you? Well, well, welcome to this webinar, sir. In fact, I uh, I wish to you, but you are very busy in arranging things through Sabrish. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. Very nice. Very good nice. Sir. Sir, thank you uh, very much for sparing your time. You are busy today. What is it? It's always a pleasure to uh, share this platform. Whatever we know, little bit we can share it. That will give us some satisfaction having served the board for such a long period. You know. Very nice of you, sir. Yeah. Uh, it is a very uh, nice. Uh, Dr. Jina. Sir. Uh, Dr. Jina. And we that, start. Uh, you know, yes. Yeah. Sir. 10:30 we will start so by the time yes, we introduce sir. and you know welcome address and in, so my introductory speech the by the time the main content takes place probably most of the planters would have joined is it is it okay, okay. Uh, our jdr yes, sir, it is okay. okay you are not yes, audible i think you are muted uh, doctor unmute sir jdr unmute your mic uh, okay sir it's okay yeah, so that we will save the time. The more time will be there for their presentation and subsequent interaction. So around 40 yes, participants are there already. Yes. So by the time we finish this formalities, yes. the more number of uh, planters and also other participants can also join. Then now, uh, Dr. Jina, you can start, uh, Dr. Jina. Uh, uh, good morning, Nagaraj. Sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, a uh, very good morning to one and all of you. To uh, we start the inaugural, I mean, we let us inaugurate the webinar. So, I would request all of you to keep your videos on. That will help the organizers take a screenshot. That's yeah, the only I way we can participate. So, uh, as much as possible, just during the inaugural session, keep your videos on so that we can see you. Now, uh, today's webinar is on impact of drought on coffee and management strategies under the current scenario. Uh, a week back or two days back, we were not so comfortable as all of us were waiting for rains. We were really stressed out. Our plans was also stressed out. So, uh, probably. Uh, the nature had its way that uh, we had rains. We had rains. Uh, uh, some of the regions had rains, uh, rains in the past two days. However, we still have a drought like conditions in many of our plantations. And this webinar was organized when the drought was really severe. And uh, so, without much ado, let me introduce uh, the team from Coffee Board. 
Uh, I am Dr. Gina. I am heading the division of uh, plant physiology. Uh, today, speak uh, we have uh, Dr. M. Santil Kumar, our director of research, uh, already who have joined, and we also have Dr. J. S. Nagra, sir, joint director of research, CCRA. And uh, today's speakers are two people: our uh, very eminent Dr. D. Venkatraman, sir, who is also the retired joint director of research, and he was heading the division of uh, plant physiology at CCRA for long. He will be uh, the, speak, uh, the main speaker today. We also have Dr. Somshekar Gowda Patil, who is a present plant physiologist working in the Division of Plant Physiology at CCRA. On behalf of the team from Coffee Board, on behalf of Secretary, C uh, CEO, Director of Research, and on my own behalf, I uh, give a very warm welcome to all the planters who have joined us uh, today in uh, for this webinar. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the, uh, let me open the floor to Dr. N, our Director of Research, Dr. N. Sandil Kumar. He will give the introductory address, sir. Yeah, good morning to everyone. I am Dr. Sandil Kumar, heading the research department, the extension department of Coffee Board. So at the outset, I thank our CEO and secretary, Dr. Jagdisha, and also the chairman, Coffee Board, Mr. Dinesh, uh, uh, for reminding me to have this uh, webinar. Um, immediately because there was a need. So on this occasion, I thank them. And uh, it is my pleasure to welcome my mentor and also the one of the very important physiologists, Dr. Ramanan sir, uh, to this webinar. I welcome all my colleagues also. And more importantly, I take this, I take this opportunity to welcome all the planters to this webinar. And uh, of course, it is very, very important to have this webinar today. For a simple reason is that one side I am feeling very happy that you no know, we are getting good price this year and also I am also equally saddened to know that drought is playing a very very you know a very nasty role and that is the appropriate word I can use because the future crop is very badly affected across the our coffee plantations of course I heard that here and there we got scanty rains in the last two three days but it is not very sufficient to you know, cope up the requirement of the coffee plantations as such. Therefore, uh, definitely for the last three, four years, it is almost coffee farming uh, looks like a gambling. Because when we require rain, it's not coming. When we don't want rain, it is pouring. Therefore, both the ways, planters' life is very badly affected. And especially this year, drought is very, very acute. Everywhere, planters are facing a lot of problems. And... Uh, even planters have become clueless what to do next. So how to take this forward? So in this scenario, we thought that, so having some kind of interaction, keeping some experts in this field, and also I felt that it is very, very necessary to give some kind of tips to the planting community so that I'm not really worried how many planters will be attending this webinar. Even a handful of planters, if they attend also, I am confident that message can be forwarded. That message can be conveyed to the fellow planters also to take care of the present situation. Keep in, keeping this in mind, we felt so two important topics can be dealt in the today's webinar. So for this, for this reason, in fact, I requested Dr. Ramanan, though he was busy, he has agreed to give one topic on drought management in coffee through irrigation and the best nutrition practices which can be adopted to man over the present problems. And also I have my colleague, Dr. Somshekar, he will touch upon the present climatic scenario in coffee tracts of India. I am open confident that these two topics will be very, very useful and also very meaningful with the present scenario existing in the coffee plantations. And also we have kept a slot for a discussion to have a better idea on the current situation and also how to manage this so that we can save our future crop. So with this background, I don't want to take much time because so we are much interested to listen to Dr. Ramanan and also to our colleague Dr. Somshekar Rao on these important topics. Therefore, I leave this floor first to Dr. Somshekar to present on the present climatic scenario followed by Dr. Ramanan. Once again, I wholeheartedly welcome all the planter friends and my colleagues, more importantly, Dr. Ramanan and Dr. Somshekarab for this wonderful occasion. 
it, it should be very meaningful and also fruitful to the planters and also it will be a very rewarding learning experience to us also through your interaction and other things. With this, I leave the floor to Dr. Jina to keep it open for Dr. Swamshikar Rao to take it further. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So we directly go to the first talk. Uh, Dr. Swamshikar Gauda Patil, he joined the board in 2015 and he has uh, he has a doctorate in plant physiology all through he's a hardcore physiologist he has been in the division of uh, C, uh, ccri at the division of plant physiology and he has done many works both individually and in collaboration let us hear from him dr somshekar goda patel uh, on present climatic scenario in coffee tracks in india somshekar please yeah yes uh, thank you uh, good morning to everyone and thank you madam for the introductions so uh, today I am presenting a topic on present uh, climate scenario in coffee tracks of India, and I will divide this uh, topic into uh, two parts. One, I can cover the scenario, uh, 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 climate scenario of the uh, in the Western countries, and what we are seeing in uh, in India, especially in the coffee tracks of India. And also the third part, the mitigation strategies that is going to be covered by our uh, uh, our blanket uh, myself. So let's start. Let's begin with the presentation. So, uh, in every forum you can attend. Uh, in every forum you can see the word the climate change. Yeah, the, uh, even if, even in the planters forum or the even the, in the scientific forum, the word we can hear is the climate change. So what does it mean? So whether it is really affecting our coffee or in other crops also. Yes, I can say this is climate change is happening all over the world, but it is in the slow process. So uh, in order to come across this climate change, there are two terms. One is the climate and another one is the weather. What is What does it mean? The weather, it is general condition of the atmosphere at a particular place and time that is called as a weather. For example, we can see this current temperature, rainfall, humidity and solar. What is the weather pattern, weather conditions of the CCR? That is uh, particular to the location and time that we will call it as a weather. Then coming to the climate, climate it is a statistic, uh, statistics of a weather over a long period of time that we will call it as a climate. Or in the other terms, you can say the long term weather patterns in a region. Typically, averaged over 30 years, that we will call it as a climate. For example, we can see this average temperature, rainfall, humidity, solar radiation that will come under uh, climates. So, in simpler terms, climate is what you accept, uh, what you expect and weather is what you get. So, uh, both weather, climate and the weather okay, that, will give us, that will give us the climate changes. So, what does it mean? It's a general shift in the climate, okay. including okay. temperature, precipitation, okay. winds and other factors that we will call it as a climate okay. change. So, what, uh, what are the impacts of this climate change uh, we are facing? Uh, so, we are seeing the glacier melts, decline in the glaciers and uh, snow cover and that leads to the sea level rise. So, high carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere we are observing and warmer temperature we are observing and increased frequency of droughts and floods we are uh, observing in uh, some of the countries and also in India and cold days and nights also we are observing in western country, countries and hot days and nights and heat waves will have become more frequent especially countries like India. So, the impact of this carbon dioxide plays a very important role for the coffee plants because we are saying this coffee is a perennial crop and, uh, uh, and it is a shade, uh, it will be grown under the shades. If you increase in the carbon dioxide, so especially in other crops also, what they have uh, tell, told us uh, in the literature, the increase in the carbon dioxide, there is directly role in the increase in the uh, vegetative growth. But the production of the photosynthesis is going to be increased. But in turn, what will happen increase in the carbon dioxide that leads to affect the sugar sensing and signaling pathways that are present in the root systems that will affect the uptake of these nutrients and thereby there will be a decrease in the quality of the uh, uh, quality of the produce. So, warmer temperature, especially the increase in the temperature that will affect the stomata, especially the, the thereby it will affect directly the photosynthetic efficiency of the plants. So, what is the predicted climate change? Uh, what we are observing? This is the uh, data I took it from the IPCC, that is Intergovernmental Panel on the Climate Change. It was established in the year 1988. The headquarters is at the Geneva yes. Switzerland. So, increase in the carbon dioxide. If you look at the 2025, it may be they have predicted that the rise will be of 405 to 450 ppm. 
if you look at the pre industrial period the carbon dioxide when we were studying at the uh, at the degree level the co2 uh, will be of 350 ppm it was 350 ppm now we are crossing the 420 ppm so it may cross 450 even by 2025 and you can see the global uh, temperature uh, change so from year 1900, uh, the temperature would cross 1.10 degrees Celsius by 2025, and by 2050, it will, it will be 2.6 degrees Celsius, and by 2100, it will be of 5.8 degrees Celsius. If you look at the mean sea level rise, uh, there will be an increase in the sea level rise. Uh, 3 to 14 centimeters uh, by 2025 and uh, 5 to 32 centimeters by 2050 and uh, by two, 2100 it will be of uh, 9 to 88 centimeters yes. rise in the sea levels that is going to affect the, uh, uh, the cities which are near to the sea levels so there uh, there they can face the floods so climate change in the reports what it has said the ipcc this is a recent report which was published in the year 2022 that is the fourth uh, uh, report we have received during the march of 2022 what they have uh, uh, given in the draft is there will be an increase of the 0.3 to 1.7 degrees celsius there is a moderate uh, rise in the uh, moderate rise in the temperatures in the extreme scenario we could be able to observe 2.6 to 4.8 degrees celsius it depends on the rate of future uh, greenhouse gas emissions so so they have given to all the crops even in the coffees like uh, co even uh, they have mentioned the coffees in their uh, in their in their uh, uh, reports so what they have said is the indicate the climate uh, change will reduce uh, worldwide yield and uh, decrease areas suitable for coffee cultivation by 2050. And also they have given in the draft that the global temperature may will continue to rise between 1.5 to 4.5 degrees Celsius. And it could be a hottest month of the year. And there can, there can be a longer and more extreme periods of rain and drought uh, can be observed. And this leads to a decrease in the bioclimatic suitable area, uh, which are suitable for the coffee growth up to by 50% by 2050. And we can expect the reduction in the yield of coffee because of the rise in the temperature as well as the rise in the rainfall. And there will be a flare of pests and diseases we could observe because of this change in the climate. So you must know this by now. This uh, whole slide credit goes to the Peter Baker who uh, attended the World Coffee Conference mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. uh, September it was held uh, at uh, uh, Bangalore uh, during September 2020. This slide I have taken it from him. So what it indicates that the planet is now at 1.1 degree to uh, 1.2 degrees Celsius warming above pre-industrial baseline. And Paris Agreement, what they have accorded. The requirement will be of uh, below two uh, two degrees Celsius, and ideally we have to pursue by 1.5 degrees Celsius. How can we achieve by these things? So it is a uh, very uh, fact that we can uh, we can reduce that temperature because our is a shade grown coffee. So there will be a uh, temperature drop. Uh, if you grow the coffee in the shade, there will be a five degrees Celsius reduction in the temperatures. There, the literature they have given is, you can observe five degrees Celsius uh, below temperature about, uh, norm, uh, as compared to the normal temperatures, if you grow the coffee. So what will be the uh, uh, impact of this temperature and rainfall trend, uh, trends? Uh, or different states of India. You can see this uh, in other states like uh, states of our country, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, right. Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra. Uh, you can see the varying trends of the temperature rise, the uh, temperature, and there will be an increase in the temperature by one degree Celsius. And you can see this rainfall also. There will be a decline in the trend we are observing in Madhya Pradesh, as well as varying trends in case of Gujarat, Chhattisgarh. There will be a uh, decline in trend of this rainfall. And Maharashtra. Uh, there will be a rise in the one degree Celsius, and they are also expected uh, they are getting the more rains in May, June, and July months. And coming to the our Karnataka regions, what is this? Uh, the temperature is 0.5 degree Celsius is increasing. We are seeing the shift in the peak rainfall months from September to October, and we are observing lower rainfall in July and the higher in August. 
So you can see the coffee growing tracks like Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Uh, there also uh, uh, there is an increase in the temperature by 0.8 degrees Celsius. And Tamil Nadu, you can see this one degree Celsius. There is a rise in the te uh, temperatures. And in, uh, in Kerala, they are observing declining uh, June and July rainfall and marginal increase in August and September. And Tamil Nadu, they are observing a decline in trend because of the northeast monsoons, very low uh, uh, low intensity of these northeast monsoons. So, why coffee is uh, susceptible to climate change? We are seeing the Arabica and the Robusta. If you look at the temperatures, temperature requirement for the Arabica coffee and temperature requirement for the Robusta coffee. Temperature requirement for Arabica coffee is 18 to 24 degrees. Whether we are getting this 24 degrees as is at present, no, absolutely no. There is an increase in the temperature we are observing. And Robusta, you can see this, the temperature 24 to 28 degrees Celsius is requirement. But what we are observing is more than the 32 degrees Celsius. So because of this, the coffee is very much susceptible to change in climate. So you can look uh, for the other countries like Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Vietnam and India, what they are facing. So last year they have, uh, there is a, there, is a, uh, there was a rising temperatures and uh, that has reduced the overall acreage. And Colombia, you can see this production costs are likely to increase and water requirements. So they are facing the uh, lack of waters for the irrigations and they are also observing the higher temperatures. And Costa Rica, you can see this uh, higher temperature they are observing in the higher altitudes. And Vietnam, there will be more of dry periods they are observing. And India, in India, especially in India, we are observing the increased rainfall and higher temperatures are favoring uh, uh, some of the pest and diseases. So for coffee, what we know and don't know, this will tell you uh, it is getting warmer everywhere and will continue to do so. And storms are we are observing and droughts are getting more intense and often frequent. And how much less sure about because we are not sure about whether the climate, uh, this climate is continued to do in a few years or it can come down. So that uh, predictions we are not having much. So how fast future warming will occur in any given locality, we are not uh, uh, sure about this. And where and when extreme rainfall and drought will occur, that also we are not knowing. But we have only one thumb rule is the wet will get wetter and the dry will get uh, dry. So we can look at the Brazil, what they are facing. This is a frost conditions they have observed in last year also. And we are now there, uh, there, they are observing this more of dry periods. And in Ethiopia, you can see this by 2015, they have faced this drought stress in Arabica. And you can see this Robusta in Uganda. Uh, last year, they have observed this stress conditions, especially in the Robusta. So this is a frost uh, condition so that, uh, at Brazil, uh, Brazil. And June last year, they have observed June, uh, in June 30th, they have observed the moderate uh, uh, frost. And July 20th, they have the severe frost. And July 30th, they have observed the uh, moderate uh, frost. This has affected the production of the coffee at uh, Brazil. So extreme events are so common now and that they often barely reach the news because this has to be uh, dealt accordingly. So we can see this last year by 2000, uh, in uh, 2021, what uh, uh, the Kerala state has faced. So they have on uh, Tokate and all the coffee growing areas, they have faced this flood uh, situations. So, so what is the uh, climate scenario at uh, our coffee growing regions? And uh, I have taken a 1995 to 2004 one decade rainfall up to three decades rainfall I have taken it and I have analyzed it. What it is indicating the deviation you can look. look so there will be a positive deviation, so that is a 16.77 mm, that is a summer period rainfall. And the rainy season, so you could uh, see this 3.19 uh, deviation is there in case of uh, rainy season rainfall. And winter uh, rainfall, you can see this 14.54 uh, deviation is there. Almost all the uh, all the uh, all the windows, you can see this positive deviations. It means that there is an uh, increase in the rainfall to an extent of 132.72 uh, over the decades. So you can see this average rainfall of five decades. You can see this 1975, they, we used to get, uh, we have received up to 2,500 mm. And uh, 2005 to 14, we have received 2,900. And the last year, 2015 to 2023, we have received 2,657. So the quantum of rainfall has not changed much, but the distribution 
uh, has changed a, a lot in case of coffee growing plants. So if you look at the temperatures, you can see this deviations 3.10% over 1975 or uh, 1995 to 2004. You can look at the rainy period that uh, maximum temperatures, there will be a uh, deviation of 6.42% and winter period, there will be of 3.99% uh, deviation. And you can look at the average maximum temperature of five, decade, five decades. The 1975 to 84, it was 27.5 degrees Celsius. Now we are facing 28.3 degrees Celsius. There will be a difference of 0.8 degrees Celsius compared to the 1975 to 84. So the summer, rainy and winter maximum temperature, it is increasing by 1 degree Celsius, 1.7 degree Celsius and 3 degrees Celsius. And compared, uh, when compared to the last decade, that is 1995 to 2004. The average maximum temperature, if you look at, there is an increase in the trends that put by 0.8 degrees Celsius. So, if you look at the minimum temperature here, so again, the maximum temperature is increasing, minimum temperature is also increasing, it is also showing the positive trends that have been deviation of 11.4 percent, especially in case of summer minimum temperature and rainy period also it is increasing by 4.191. And winter period also there is an increase in the minimum temperature by 6.18 percent when we compare to the 1995 to 2004. This also tells you there is an increase in the minimum temperature. We have seen increase in the rainfall. We have seen increase in the maximum temperature. We have seen increase in the minimum temperatures. So this is the current scenario uh, of uh, weather pattern, weather weather patterns we observed in the coffee growing zones. Especially we have installed uh, uh, the automatic automated weather stations at all these locations. At CCR we have installed Moodgear, Sakleshpur, Gonikopal, and Vainat. We are observing continuously observing the rainfall trend, temperature trend, uh, and also the crop status. So what we have observed uh, when we compare to the uh, uh, last train for 2022, 23 and 24. So 2022, especially this blossom time, uh, 2022, we have not received the rain. February, we have not received the rain. Especially in March, we have received the rain in all the locations in 2022. If you look at the 2023, uh, January, we have received a rain. And uh, February, we have not received rains in the other uh, in uh, coffee growing zones. And during the March times, we have received a rain. The 2024 is a different kind. Uh, you can look at the January. We have received all the uh, we have received a rain at all the regions. Whereas in February we have not received, and March till date we have not received. Especially in the, uh, in our stations we have received a rain of 14.478. In other uh, locations they have not received. Even the I not they have not received the rain during the March uh, March times. So, if you look at the temperature rise, especially during the 2024, uh, 24, especially from the January to February and March months, you can see this uh, CCRI, the January month, the temperature was 22.39 degrees Celsius. If you look at the February, it was uh, 33.16 degrees Celsius and March, it is 33.1 degrees Celsius. There will be a uh, 0.2 degrees Celsius rise in CCRI. And if you look at the Asin Gopi also, it is comes under the Chikmangalos, there will be an uh, increase in the temperature by 2 degrees Celsius in Chikmangalos regions. If you look at the Moodgere regions, uh, uh, February month, it, uh, the average temperature, maximum temperature was uh, 34.6 degrees Celsius. And during uh, uh, March, uh, the temperature, uh, it is uh, 35.44 degrees Celsius. If you look at the Sakleshpur also, there is an increase in the 1 degree Celsius. If you look at the Goni Koppal also, there is an increase in the 1 degree Celsius. And Chattadi also, there is an increase in the 1 degree Celsius. By this slide, I can uh, say that the temperature is increasing in every month. Even it can cross 1 degree, we are saying that 1 degree Celsius. By next year, it may cross 2 degree Celsius. So, because of this global change in the climate. So recent uh, time, uh, you can see this uh, summer months rainfall, the uh, coefficient of variation is more than 300%. It indicates that we are not uh, predicting the rainfall and we are not reaching the rain at, uh, at during the blossom times. And out of 10 years, what has happened? Only two years blossom and backing showers uh, come, uh, it has come in time. And uh, in one year, early and uh, uh, and uh, seven years, a lot of variations we have observed these rainfalls. Because of this condition, I can stress upon the we have to uh, augment, uh, we have to make some of the water harvesting structures for it. 
protecting the coffee from the adverse effects of these droughts. So you can look at the uh, uh, March month uh, uh, rainfalls. In all the reasons, last year's 22 to 23, they have received a rain, and 2024, we have not received a rain, especially during the March months. So, if you look at the rainfall from 1926 to till date, so the as uh, in my earlier slide, I said that the quantum has not changed much, but distribution, I will show you in the next slides how the distribution has changed. So, in case of drought is, there is an increase in the drought days we are observing. So, if you more drought days we have observed during the uh, during the year of 2003 to 4, and followed by 1995 96, we have observed a 121 drought days, and also in 2001 to we have observed 117 days. Means it is going to be increased in next uh, years, it may so. So, you can see this. I said the distribution has changed a lot. This is analysis I did it from the time series so with the help of our studio. What indicates that in some of the years we have received a rain during the February months, and in March there will, we have not received a rain after the 2001 or the 2003. And you can see, look at the uh, especially the rainfall uh, during the month of July. July. So there is a shift in the rainfall. As excess rain we are receiving during the July second fortnight, and also it is continued in the month of August. There will be a shift in the rainfall from June to July. So I can say that there is a shift in the rainfall also we are seeing and continuous of saturations in some years we are observing in, uh, in particular in some of the years. So the result indicated that the quantum of rainfall has not been changed and observed a shift in rainfall from August to month onwards and prolonged wetness we are observing in recent years. <coughs> So, why we are facing this uh, 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 lack of rainfall? It is because mainly because of the last year means it is because of the El Nino effect. So, it may be continue in 2024 years but, uh, up to uh, April or the May month and it, uh, it follows the neutral phase. Then it will follow the La Nino effect that is June to August month and we will get a better monsoon during this year. So this has been predicted by the World Meteorological Department. And the scientists indicate that scorching somewhere across the India this year. And uh, we are observing the increase in the temperatures and it is due to the last year effect that is 2023 El Nino effect. We are observing the rise in the temperatures and it may continue till April month. So, 2023 and 24 El Nino among the five strongest on record and will continue uh, feeling heat in 2023 because of the effect of this last year rainfall, we are observing the rise in the temperature. So, I said the El Nino effect just to give us, uh, some snippet about this NC, NC, uh, El Nino effect. What does it mean? El Nino Southern Oscillation, so there is a change in the uh, change in the weather pattern, especially in the Pacific Oceans. That is the El Nino effect. So we are observing in El Nino, there is a uh, neutral phase will be there, and El, uh, El Nino effect will be there, and La Nino effect will be there. El Nino, neutral phase also will receive, and El La Nino uh, effect also will receive a rain. Whereas in the El Nino effect, there will be a lack of the rain. So we are uh, lack of the rain, and more drought uh, drought days we will observe during this El Nino effect. So El Nino the uh, uh, Spanish word uh, in in Spanish word it is called as a little boy and La Nina in Spanish word it uh, we'll, we'll call it as a little girl. <clears throat> so neutral phase means there will be a movement of uh, uh, trade winds, strong trade winds that will uh, that will bring all this heat uh, water or the warm water water to the western uh, Pacific Oceans. So thereby we will receive a rain in our Asiatic regions. <laughs> Whereas in El Nino, there will be a movement of the uh, uh, weak trade of winds towards the western uh, uh, Pacific Oceans. There will be a strong trade winds towards the uh, eastern uh, Pacific Oceans. Thereby, whatever the uh, warmer water is there uh, in the Pacific Oceans, that will take to the uh, eastern Pacific uh, region. And there will be an operation of these waters and there they will get a heavy rain, especially in the South America regions. <laughs> In La Nina effect also, the uh, the strong trade winds that will bring this warm water to the uh, Western Pacific Oceans and uh, thereby will receive a good rain in the uh, Asia. 
So what will be the effect of this uh, El Nino that is uh, uh, because of the lack of the rainfall, we will observe this disaster, we will observe this uh, increased temperature, we will observe these droughts and floods, and we will observe th some of the thunderstorms in some of the areas, and uh, we will observe the heat waves also. These are the impacts of this ENSO. Then what are the effects of this increase in the temperature and uh, uh, rainfall on climate, on, on coffee? So, if you look at the factors and the impacts, uh, if you receive untimely and ill distributed summer showers, that will affect, uh, that will lead to a running blossom and we will get a lower fruit set and uh, there will be a premature buried drops. And if you look at the change of atmospheric temperature, if there is an increase in the temperature, it affects the berry development and outturn and quality. And we are, certainly we are observing an increase in the trend in the temperatures by 0 0.076 degrees Celsius per year and uh, increased by 2.89 degrees Celsius during last four decades we have observed. And it favors the spread of the uh, pests, maybe the western borers and the berry borers, wherever the shade is very less. There we can observe this uh, western borers. And we can observe some of the uh, flare up of new pests and diseases. It may come, and we can observe the sh shifting uh, shifting of the Arabica to Robusta, which results in wider area of low shades, and this resulted in change in the uh, coffee agro ecosystems. So, if you look at the uh, low shaded uh, low shade increase temperatures, especially this low shade, there will be an increase in the temperature we have observed, and there will be a reduced uh, relative humidity we can observe, and this affects the photosynthesis and affects the yield sustainability. And if you look at the impact of unusual post monsoon rainfall on the ripe berries, we can uh, observe splitting of the fruit skins and falling of endospons to the grounds. And in some of the uh, plants, you can see this drying of fruits. And you uh, can observe increase in the temperatures, there will be a depletion in water resources, and uh, we could able to uh, could not able to find the water for the irrigations during the summer months. These are the impacts of this climate change on the coffee. So, what are the monitored impacts of this uh, change in the temperature and rainfall patterns on, especially in the coffee? If there is an increase in the temperature, it reduces the photosynthesis and it uh, uh, there is a drying of the outer skin and less percentage of mucilage you can get. And we can change, uh, we can see the change in the pest and disease uh, incidence and it leads to a more drought and loss of the soil moisture. We could have able to observe this because of the increase in the temperatures. So, because of the increase in the rainfall, you can see there is there will be an damage the beans and affects its growth and irregular uh, precipitation patterns during harvest seasons that make the drying process more difficult and altering the uh, quality of the product. And because of the strong precipitation that leads to erosion, landslide and loss of plants and soils, Further, it reduces the pH of the soils. So, strong winds, which results in loss of plants and falling of flowers, and thus reduces the reduces the harvest. And uh, if there is an increase in the rainfall, you could able to observe the change in the blossoming and the irregular blossom you could observe because of the uh, increase in the rainfall. So, we have to dealt this temperature and rainfall accordingly. How can we, uh, we be able to minimize this temperature effect? It's only possible through our shade uh, because of the uh, uh, retention of these shades. Uh, in one of, uh, we are saying that our uh, coffee growing tracks will come under the Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats of India. So, these are the world's uh, richest biodiversity. We could able to see 7,000 uh, species of flowering plants. We could able to see 1,800 species of non-flowering plants. We could able to see 139 mammal species, 508 bird species, 179 MPM, so many things, 6,000 insect species. Uh, uh, this is all because of the shades. If you want, um, if, if you retain the shades, it automatically retains the, uh, it will automatically brings the temperature by 3 degrees Celsius. In one of the reports uh, being he has reported in his uh, publication that saying that we could able to minimize the temperature by 3 degrees Celsius by retaining the shades. So, under suboptimal condition, shade will reduce the leaf temperature by up to 4 degrees Celsius. If you are having uh, uh, optimum shades, what we are recommending, if you could, if you are having that one, we could able to minimize this 3 degrees Celsius temperature uh, uh, compared to the normal temperatures. And we could able to reduce the temperature by 4 degrees Celsius if, uh, if we are having the shades. 
So, in order to conclude my speech, uh, the average uh, dec uh, decadal maximum and uh, minimum temperature is increasing by 0.8 degrees Celsius and 0.9 degrees Celsius, in, especially in the coffee tracks of India. And the average decadal rainfall is also increasing by 132.72, but quantum has not changed, only we are observing the shift in the rainfall. And we have uh, what we are observing is the more drought the days we are observing, and it may increase in uh, next few years also. And every, every increase in temperature that, that leads to decrease the photosynthetic efficiency of the coffee plants, especially by closing the stomatas and uh, reducing the carbon dioxide intakes from the stomata that will reduce the photosynthetic efficiency of the plants. And increasing the temperature during summer seasons affects the coffee production because uh, we are observing blossom during the summer seasons. If there is an increase in the temperature, there will be an uh, uh, evaporation of the soil moisture uh, by uh, 5 to 6 mm per day. So, there will be a loss of the uh, moisture from the soils. So, what uh, uh, World Meteorological Department is predicted, El Nino, uh, it is going to be continued till April and leading to increase the temperature up to the April month. So, with this, uh, I conclude by saying one quote that the God has, uh, has created this nature and nature has given everything to uh, lead the life and what human beings are giving back to the natures. We have to protect these natures and in turn the nature will take care of our life. With this, I thank and uh, I thank uh, all the uh, participants for patience listening and also I thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to present on, uh, on the climate scenarios, especially in the coffee tracks of India. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Shrika. You have in, uh, you have gone in depth on the climate change scenario in all coffee growing regions, not alone in India, but you have covered the global level. You have also shown us El Nino, La Nina. You have shown us the biodiversity of Western Guards. You have touched upon the shade management. So you have practically covered a lot of aspects in this one hour time. And uh, thank you very much. It was indeed very exhaustive. Uh, I now uh, thank you, Somshekar. Uh, I now request uh, uh, Venkat Ramanan sir to take over the floor. Uh, as I told during my introductory session, uh, Venkat Ramanan sir has been serving, uh, was serving as in various capacities in coffee board uh, during the time we reported to the board. He has been a hardcore physiologist. He had, he was heading the division of plant physiology for long. And then he joined as joint director of research. He, uh, he retired from the services as joint director of research, but uh, more. More importantly, he still continues to visit many plantations and offer his valuable services. Uh, we actually managed to get him today because he was really busy. Uh, we thank you, sir. In a short notice, you have made the presentation and we thank you for your presence here. And now I leave the floor to uh, Venkat Ramanan, sir. Sir, please. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to share this platform today. I have to thank uh, Dr. Jagdisha, CEO and Secretary Coffee Board for giving me this opp opportunity and also Dr. M. Sandil Kumar, Director of Research. Actually, the topic is apt at present, the situation what we face. Actually, the situation is comparatively less when com uh, in India. When you compare what Vietnam and Indonesia have suffered, the crop loss is very high. And that is the oh, reason. Oh, audio. Are you audio, audio, here? Audio, audio is not there? Sir, we are able to hear the audio. Participants, can but you the... please respond? Is it audible? Audio is, sir, is, audio is clear, sir. Audio, audio is clear, sir. 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 But it can be a little louder, please. Ramanan, sir, uh, kindly this uh, audio settings, you can increase the volume of the audio, sir. Yeah, it is full. Actually, could you hear now? Yes. Yes, yeah, sir. Clear it. Yes, sir. Yeah, it is clear for us. Some of the uh, planters, they express it's not uh, that audible. Anyway, anyway, you go ahead, sir. Let us, let us uh, hear from them again. Yeah, I, is it all right now? Is I have increased my sound. Okay, it's better. Sir. It's audible. Yeah, audible, it sir. Much, yeah, audible. Sir. So please go ahead. Sir. Yeah, 
Uh, actually, no. The scenario is very bad in other countries like uh, Vietnam. This year, crop loss is very high. Similarly, Indonesia, particularly, especially Robusta crop. As you know, Robusta is more susceptible to drought. And as I have even, uh, we had a presentation in August about the Elino effect. Luckily, we did not have that much of a uh, problem by receipt of good shower in the month of January. Whereas the other countries have suffered very much. And now that is the reason that there is a lot of demand for robusta coffee. And naturally, it also increased the price in the uh, what we are realizing now. Really a good price. Never it has gone in my 51 years. First time I'm seeing the robusta price is more than of Arabica coffee. Mm. That is the scenario now we have got. So it is very important that we should improve the productivity of Robusta. Although we have not got the good rainfall after the January rain. I, I like to deal on the, the present scenario because I was all along seeing so many plantation during uh, from February to till uh, uh, last week. I have seen across all the, particularly Karnataka, in all the three regions, uh, we have, I have traveled and seen practically what is the situation also. And it is a nice thing to share the, my experience on that. And uh, we will just have an idea. The whole objective is that we have to look into the, we know we have got a problem in uh, getting the workers on time or uh, to do the job on time. We have got a lot of limitations. And also, we don't have skilled workers as on today. A lot of uh, new workers, they are not even able to identify coffee and other plants in such a situation. Every time, every day, we are only training the people. So a lot of difficulties are there. But with all that, we should improve our productivity and should Utilize this opportunity to encash our uh, income. Okay, that is the whole idea. Yeah, although that uh, the, we were, I was uh, telling that the situation may come like this even in August due to Elino effect. And we had a wonderful presentation from Dr. Somsheka, who has utilized all our data, authorization, what we installed in all the regions. He has utilized very well and explained very clearly what is going to be in future and how it will be, how it is going to affect. It's an excellent presentation. I congratulate him for his uh, utilizing the data and presenting it. Now, let us uh, see the, the, the uh, uh, next slide, please. Now, the drought. Drought may be defined as a sustained period of time without significant rainfall, as we all know. See, what happened is now, luckily, usually we will have failure of northeast monsoon. Always we will have more drought. This year is a peculiarity. We had a very good northeast monsoon till uh, first week or second week of December. Every plantation had a good rainfall. And in fact, that rainfall has affected the Arabica coffee harvesting very badly. Although it is very beneficial as a winter irrigation for Robusta, for Arabica we had a lot of problem and at the time of uh, main period of uh, ripening, fruit ripening, we had this uh, high rainfall causing the uh, parchment uh, drop to the ground and getting dried up and no workers to relieve the crop early. So, so much of the problem, so much of the crop loss was there, but we were lucky enough that we did not have that much of drought. Now, the question is that the delayed blossom shower. Next slide, please. The delayed blossom shower is the one now we face because Northeast was so active, so not much of a problem. But the delayed blossom shower is especially in the, during the current year scenario, what happened is we had a, a good rainfall in the month of January. Many of the plantation, even though there are some plantation did not get 
even for in particular locality, they did not receive even till today. There is uh, like only December rainfall was the lost rainfall. Till today, they did not receive. There are some very few locations we have that problem. Otherwise, the majority of the plantation in the coffee tract uh, had very good uh, uh, shower in the month of January. Now, the subsequently for the blossom we had, we did not have the now back in shower. That is the, the present situation. And uh, the impact when you see, when you are not getting the uh, rainfall on time, you see the impact on Robusta. Many of the, even now also, in many of the uh, non-irrigated Robusta is showing the incipient wilting. If this occurs, naturally our city, fruit set is going to be affected drastically. And uh, you know, when, the, when we, after this type of uh, drought, when we get insufficient shower, again, the problem is more. Whether it is Arabica, you get a padding. If it is Robusta, you get a, a pinking or the soft rivers or snake mosquitoes. What happens, this floral abnormality naturally reduces your fruit set. That is the impact of the drought. Now, our objective is under every circumstance we should get a, a good blossom so that the setting will be very good. The, when we get a good blossom, the, actually the correct period to get the blossom in Robusta is on eighth day. If we time it correctly, the quantum of irrigation or sprinkler which we are giving is correct, we should get on eighth day the blossom as a single blossom. But actually, you know, in a, with this rainfall and other things, invariably we are not getting on eighth day is the blossom in Robusta. In this year, I have seen everything was all right. But uh, the blossom was on ninth day and tenth day instead of eighth day. That is the deviation which we got. This is due to that uh, flower bed development was not adequate. That was uh, that is the reason that is getting delayed little bit uh, one day. And Arabica always that you have the three days running. I mean uh, blossom with a 25, 50 percent, and 25 percent. Uh, so I'm second next slide. Actually, I'm talking about next slide. Yeah. After this, next one. On blossom day. Next slide, please. Yeah. So this uh, blossom is spread over for three days in robust. Arabica is a common thing and it's a cell pollinated. Whereas in robusta, when the blossom is not uniform. We require some uh, agents. We, see, usually wind is the one which is always doing the pollination to some extent. But uh, uh, honeybees are very important on this, particularly when the blossom is not uniform. We should have enough population of honeybees in the plantation. That's why we always say that September, October, we can have beehives insulation and have the bee population enough to such a situation where when the blossom is not uniform, to have a better fruit set, we are insisting upon the uh, improving the honeybee population in the plantation. Now, when you have everything is all right, the question is the, again the setting. Actually, when we have got good population of honeybees, we have even we have recorded up to 80%. But generally, when you take into normal consideration, the percentage is 70%. The reason being is that we have got the problem of uh, no pollination, then no fertilization, and the blossom is not uniform. And the long drought, the moisture percentage in the uh, flower bud get reduced, which is result in uh, poor proof setting. This is the one which we, to, we should take care in uh, having this one for uh, the, having enough uh, pollination. We should have more honeybees. That will definitely will help us to get a better proof set. 
Now, after blossom, the thing is that if you are not getting within 15 to 20 days from the date of irrigation or the natural shower, there is always a reduction in the fruit set. Actually, now we face that is the problem where we had the January rainfall and we had the this one. Uh, next slide, please. Where the, when we had the January rainfall, no, next slide, it's uh, browning. No, previous one, previous one, yeah. Previous, yeah, next one. Browning. Now, the backing shower is a very important thing. Now, the problem this year we faced is that we, there are, as last year rainfall was very low. Many of the plant, or some of the plantation do not have required water for backing. And also there are some restriction to use uh, natural uh, resources, natural river and uh, streams to utilize it. Also, there is uh, some uh, hurdles in utilizing it this year because of shortage of water. So here we have to take up some measures which I am coming to you as a recommendation in course of time. But the thing is that we should see that this uh, browning is not taking place and we are not going to, we should not lose the fruit set is the very important thing. Next slide please. In Arabica, we don't have such a problem much and always the setting will be very good because self-pollinated, except that exposure. When you expose the plant and plants undergo stress, then uh, the oxidative stress like yellowing and drying, there is a possibility for affecting the, the fruit set. Otherwise, in normal course, when you get a normal blossom, the set is going to be very good. And you know, generally Arabica is tolerant to drought and it can withstand to drought to a larger extent, provided it is not exposed to uh, direct light and having oxidative stress. Under that condition, if you think about the variety or the cultivars uh, tolerant to drought, this is the category. Some, as the uh, old plants, our Sandraman was there. Had the highest tolerance to drought. Uh, next is that selection line, Tafaricola into ACT, Ibidoti, Timar. Okay. And this is the category that we have got, and always Arabica is tolerant to drought when compared to uh, Robusta because of the major uh, reason is the deep root system. Now, the present crisis is, as I was telling, the delayed blossom showers. Now, as uh, Dr. Somersaker was presenting how the temperature regime increase. As you know, we usually what we have in earlier days in month of May, we had this time, this year by February, March itself, such a high temperature in some of the areas where it was drastically affecting the photosynthesis and always and the plants were suffering and yearly to show the wilting. And the soil moisture also depleted drastically, particularly in marginal soil. And, and also, as I said earlier, we don't have water to take care of it because the limitation in the availability because our tank did not get filled because it was a uh, much lower than the normal rainfall. Naturally, we did not get to the fullest capacity of our tanks. And uh, we have the limitation in the irrigation so that we are able to give only blossom and we are waiting for the backing. That is the situation. And also, as I said, uh, public resources of uh, river utilizing water from river stream, there is uh, some restriction. It's all limiting that now the present uh, problem on the set. Actually, we had a very good uh, shower in the month of um, January. As you know, it was so early. The mature robusta had only 10 to 15 percent. Whereas the young coffee yielding one where they relieved the crop much earlier in December, 
we had to extent of 30 to 40 percent. Even then, the first and second node from the tip was not ready. You know, the induction or the flower bud initiation takes place only in the month up to January 15. So the bud initiated in the first node and second node, it was not ready for the uh, blossom. So it was as such leftover on the plant. But still, the fruit set was quite good because the soil moisture status was at that time, in, on, it was the rainfall was January 4th and 5th, majority of the places. And we had the rainfall in the first week till first and first fortnight of uh, December in majority of the places. So moisture was adequate. So the fruit set was very good in majority of the thing. Now question is, now for this backing is uh, one getting affected. Because, and also there are some tendency for the robust immature flower bud result in blossom. And, uh, and it will be late blossom 12th day or 14th day, it will not set. That is the thing which we observe when some of the plantation, when you see now that the fruit set was not good, that could be one of, because of the immaturity and also limitation on the uh, pollination because late blossom. And uh, another thing is that um, the, the rainfall which has been received in the month of January and we did not, uh, at, at the time of a good ripening in Robusta, we did not have workers to harvest the crop on time. This has resulted in the uh, over-ripening or drying of crop on the plants. And also, the fall of dry fruits was very high. I think I have not come across in getting a gleaning collection more than 12 to 13 kg per worker in uh, getting the gleanings in Robusta coffee because generally you know that we use uh, uh, picking mat and then harvest the crop. But what we are getting is that what it has dropped out to the ground at the, during the development stage before commencing the harvest. There is a many plantation I have experienced they did not get the expected or estimated crop after the harvest in certain blocks where ripening was high and got dried up. Especially those blocks has pulled them down their productivity. That is the scenario that we face. And the, the retention of fruits, even I think uh, only some of the plantations have completed just a, a, a few days back due to lack of workers and other difficulties they have done it. What makes this one retain the plant on the, I mean, retain the crop on the plant, definitely your flower bud development is affected. What happens is that uh, when the fruit growth is not there, you don't see any uh, improvement on the power bite which has already initiated, there may not be any growth at all. All nutrients are supplied to the developing fruits only or the fruits retained on the plant. We call it as source to sink relationship. So always it goes to the well-developed tissues like fruits and they, only when you relieve the crop, then the flower bud starts getting it and then it will develop. That is the scenario. And uh, this time I have seen many of the, some of the plantation who have got good water source, but they are not commenced till last third week of February, March, any irrigation because saying that they want to complete the harvest in pepper. Because they are afraid that when you go for the irrigation, the pepper crop is affected. Actually, we should think about uh, this one a uh, possibility. Probably it uh, damages a little bit and we can collect it back. But when you delay your uh, irrigation in um, for blossom, always it is going to be uh, poor fruit set. Because as per our record, in, uh, for example, in, uh, when you take Balanus zone, I have recorded around uh, every week of delay 
thing after March 15, with high temperature coupled with uh, moisture stress or low moisture status in the soil, I used to get around 56 kg clean coffee uh, per acre per week decrease. When it comes to the South Kurg area, I have observed up to 40 kg clean coffee for every week of delay. Actually, what happens is why this is happening is that if you irrigate after that, you get a normal blossom. But the pollen viability is drastically decreased because of the moisture problem in the flower bed and the pollen grain loses its viability and germination. You see a normal blossom, ultimately the set is going to be very poor. So we should avoid delaying any irrigation uh, after 15th or 20th of March. So it is better that we take care of that and going for irrigation much earlier. And especially the area where we have done shade regulation and exposure to afternoon sun, all these things we should consider. And, uh, 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 and we should avoid making the plant to suffer and getting into less fruit set. Hmm? Next one, please. Now we have got uh, certain of the blocks still, the non-irrigated plots, blocks have not been given any protection at all because they were not having the uh, I think I am on the impact of crisis non-irrigated block. Before that, yeah. Now, the, no, this one ill effect, so what happens is that we should give the drought ameliorative spray, which we have suggested earlier also. We should give that before plant showing wilting. The correct period of uh, the drought ameliorative spray is that second fortnight of January and February in two sprays in monthly interval. But this time, the rainfall we should January has helped us to have one more month of uh, uh, period. So we could have started that program by February and March. But till March, people were not, our plantation could not be able to do it because the harvesting itself was not completed because they don't have manpower. Actually, nothing to do the drought emulate spray with the harvest because whether we harvest the crop or not, we should go ahead with the, this one, provided we have the manpower to do that job. But that was the major constraint that many of the plantation could not do it. Even now also, as uh, plants such are uh, uh, having a good shade and also facing eastern and northern, is not exhibiting uh, the droughts, I mean, uh, incipient wilting, we can go ahead with the spray. That is the one. We can think about that. And uh, now the question is, we are getting delay in our... Uh, our uh, backing shower. So, there are uh, plantation where we have got the irrigation has been given, waiting for the backing shower. We have got a recommendation for that to tie up another 25 days or 28 days, four weeks time. We can go for a foliar spray, which is going to be, which I am suggesting in this presentation. And uh, the receipt of rainfall during January has uh, Really, really increased the incidence of coffee berry borer at this time. What happened was that uh, fruits which has fallen down due to the, particularly, especially in Arabica Robusta plantation, the plantation which I have got both Arabica and Robusta, the incidence level was tremendously high. The fruit drop in the, the, in the Arabica has also has helped for the berry borer to proliferate. Actually, now the, some of the plantation have noticed the incidence level of berry borer after harvesting crop in Robusta. At the time of pulping only, we could be able to observe in some of the plantation. 
some plantation have, who have taken up the care in uh, our uh, installing the berry borer trap, they were able to control and minimize the incident. But however, in general, the incidence of berry borer has increased tremendously with the rainfall. That is uh, one of the other crises which we have got this time. And similarly, the good moisture coupled with uh, this one, uh, uh, high temperature in this one, we have got the mealybug incidents in many of the plantation of robusta were observed. That is uh, another problem. And uh, in Arabica, the humid weather condition by the January rainfall, we had a very high incidence of leaf rust, especially our old plant material like Kaveri, Selection 795, Selection 9, even the recent one, HDT Katuai, we had a very high incidence of uh, leaf rust. Now, the overall is the, the situation. Our objective we have got is one is irrigation. But even in irrigation, when I have gone uh, over to some of the state, the irrigation was not done properly in the sense, actually, you know, we only, our place, we insist upon that because we have four to six months of drought. Next slide, please. You know, usually coffee is a uh, rain-fed crop. And particularly in the equatorial region, we, we, we don't have any necessity to go for irrigation because there is no specific wet and dry period. Whereas here, in our condition, we have got four to six months, if you are lucky. This year, only two months or three months drought. And uh, the, as you know, long drought, uh, really, our production is uh, uh, affected. So this is the irrigation which we always recommend and it is prevailing, you know. The major problem is that overlapping of the, uh, the irrigation uh, uh, between the jets is not proper. Many of the plantation I see, it's only touching the periphery, that's all. It's not overlapping. You know, in any one of the gadget, whatever you use, whether you are, uh, skipper or gun or 250 jets or 100 jets, the whole objective is that suppose, for example, we say skipper, when we are using uh, say six pipe plane between the jets, at least five should overlap. 70%, 75% of the area should get the overlap. That only we will get the required precipitation, whatever rainfall we say. For example, you take skipper, we get per hour per sheet, it is just say 0.75 inches. That is almost you get say uh, 17, 18 mm. So we, if it is a 250 jet, we say it is just half an inch, so 12 mm in one hour. So, we have to calculate and we have to see that we are uh, having that overlapping depending upon the area. You know, which are the area have got the limitation and it has got, we know all these things, uh, most versatile method and everybody know how to give this one using the different nozzles, everything is done. But the thing is that we should get the required precipitation. This is the one what we recommend, quantum of irrigation. Next slide, please. Now, you know, our whole objective is not to bring the wilting point to field capacity. We never recommend any irrigation to make the wilting, uh, I mean, to the field capacity. That is water holding capacity of the soil, 100%. We don't recommend that much. But invariably, we recommend at least the to reach 75% of the field capacity. That is the whole object. That view, we recommend around, depending upon the drought period, if it is three months drought, four months drought, depending upon that, we will increase the, the quantum of irrigation. And however that we have to go for that, say, blossom irrigation at least 
two inches is a uh, optimum so that you are giving adequately uh, the irrigation and backing always one to one and a half inches that is 25 to 38 mm the question is that now last year my observation is who has done the uh, fertilizer application along with the blossom irrigation today they have got the cropping wood having more than 10 to 12 nodes whereas the plantation which applied the fertilizer after the result of shower because they are not inclined to do that in the month of uh, March or April and they have done it uh, waiting for the rainfall especially last year many of the plantation got good rainfall in the month of June so very late application of fertilizer resulted in only six to eight cropping nodes this year actually weather was good growth was good but we did not provide the nutrient on time it has delayed the productivity of the plant so better always we prefer to go for the irrigation blossom irrigation and they, we are coming back again another one inch so we are ensuring three and a half inches minimum to utilize the uh, applied fertilizer very effectively and it starts from March and May by the end of December you may get it to 10 to 11 nodes and even if you take average per node is 30 fruits we actually potentially is up to 61 we get 61 fruits per node we get in robusta we get at least even 30 it is going to give us improvement in the crop so it is better that we go with the application during the uh, blossom period and invariably to improve the productivity when not this space always we go for winter irrigation that is only the idea is to minimize our drought effect as well as to improve the new shoes have another two, one or two nodes because the flower bed induction takes place in robusta up to tip node that means up to december january what you get the node it can have the flower bed initiation Whereas in Rabba Arabica, only old wood or not the up to tip wood, you don't get the crop. That is the advantage in Robusta in improving the, the uh, growth by giving winter irrigation in the absence of rainfall. But the last three years, we are having very good rain till December, a natural winter irrigation we are getting and we are having very good growth. Now the question is next is the harvesting of the crop because we have to always have a program clear cut program where when we are irrigating we should give a gap for the flower bed to get the maturity so that you will get uniformity in the blossom. We should not uh, immediately after harvest we should not take up the blossom irrigation. If you are harvesting you are completing in the month of December I prefer to have at least 45 days gap because the flower beds which are yet to get initiated by December first week and January uh, first week how to have to maturity we give that 45 days if it is uh, you are completing the harvest uh, December January we prefer 30 days if it is a first night of uh, February at least 20 days second fortnight 15 days if it is only you are doing it in March at least seven to 10 days gap after the harvest so that you are what the flower bed initiated will develop and ready for maturity to have uniform blossom this uh, thing is not adopted people based on the convenience or the uh, plantation based on the convenience they go ahead with the application so this is the one and we feel is uh, one need to be modified uh, I think uh, you have to go for the next slide, uh, some second. I am talking about period of irrigation. Yeah, okay. Now, the second important thing, backing irrigation has to be in 20 days. So, this is the, uh, uh, the impact and you see the result. Next slide, please. See the one when you give blossom alone, irrigation, blossom backing, and even you are maintaining the moisture adequate 
the increment in the crop, even though it's a very old data, it has got a relevance today. When you take care of blossom and backing, the percentage of increase is so high. Excellent. And you get. And the only thing is I have just to put on this slide to just to recreate how important is blossom and backing so that you get a better uh, result and better uh, crop. Now, question is how to manage the situation. See, this is the combination which we recommend to tie over the situation. The one kg of urea, single superphosphate, I think we have got now powder form and uh, granular form. Better to use the powder form and also you soak it for the overnight because a lot of inert material is very high in single superphosphate and takes longer time as we used to do for copper sulfate dissolving the previous day. You can dissolve single superphosphate and keep it overnight and filter it and then use it for your uh, spray. And this combination really helps when you spray it. Particularly, we advocate to go in the month of um, January second fortnight and uh, February second fortnight. But this year, it, uh, for the result of rainfall January, we prefer that February and March. Now there are some plantation which we are yet to give the irrigation, but the plants are not showing any incipient wilting. They can go ahead with this spray. Till if, if it starts wilting, what happens is it is loses its capacity to absorb. And there is no point in giving a plant which is already drooping, the leaves are drooping, that's called, we call it wilting. It will not absorb when you give the spray. So it is better that, uh, that uh, plants in out sometime, what happened in the night uh, for the moisture, I mean the dew or the mist, it recovers. Early morning, it will be very good, up to say 10, 30, 11. There will not be any drooping in the leaves. At that time, we can give the spray. That means we have to start the spray much earlier in the area where the plants are already showing some wilting. The next day morning, we can be in the early morning, we can give the spray so that it gets absorbed. The whole idea is that the plant can withstand the drought. What happens is this uh, NPK, what we have done, is makes that plant to reduce the transpiration loss. By con the stomatal, conduct stomatal closure and opening is controlled by adequate level of nitrogen and uh, potassium in the cell cell. That is the idea that we have given this recommendation. And also other amino acids and other things so are involved, proline and increment and all that we have correlated with this. And we find that this is uh, showing very good result. Once you give this spray on time, the plant will not show 28 days any uh, wilting. That is the advantage. Another thing is it maintains the turgidity in the leaf. Second is it maintains the moisture level in the flower bed. So that you will not get much of your problem on the fruit set. That is the idea. The recommended uh, dosage is uh, one liter uh, solution per plant. Approximately it comes to, uh, if it is 10 by 10, 400 uh, liters of uh, solution per, per acre is the one. Now, the blocks which we are not able to give backing, this can be given before it shows wilting because Suppose we have given blossom irrigation uh, uh, now. It, within 20 days, if you give this spray, another 28 days it can withstand. That is the advantage because this planopix is a hormone which really helps the multiplication of uh, cell and making the uh, fertilized embryo to the, have the attachment to the parent cell. That cell division takes place in the plants and makes that one, there will not be any reduction in the fruit set. It helps a lot. That is the idea of giving this hormone uh, along with this. It really helps. But only thing is that spray has to be done within 15, 10 to 15 days, depending upon the uh, exposure, and uh, before plant exhibit the wilting. Really, it is going to be helpful 
and in the absence of any backing shower. However, if you are given blossom and backing, it could be repeated for the further uh, period of this one. 10 days after the backing irrigation, we can go ahead. Another 28 days, if you are not having any rainfall also, your fruit set is not affected. Your growth is on in the plants. That is the advantage with this. In case we have got the plants which are having a wilting already, how to co manage it is the one. Now we have got what we usually give the spray line, whatever that for a border preparation and other things we are using, calcium oxide spray line. So 10 kg of spray line with uh, your uh, either what you have rice genji, you can have all the starch, it's dobi starch available in the market. You can have 800 gram to 1 kg per barrel. If you spray on the above the leaf, it is upper surface. All other sprays in coffee is always we recommend lower space because lower surface has got the stomata. Here our objective is to reflect the light, reduce the temperature, leaf temperature, and make the plants to withstand the drought. For that, we are spraying this above the leaf so that we are able to make this plant to withstand the drought. And actually in normal course, we recommend uh, 20 kg if the plants are having turgid leaves. But in here, the plant already start wilting. We are not uh, recommending the full dosage of uh, the spray. Actually, our Dr. George Daniel, who is our deputy director of uh, research in uh, Chunde, he has done a lot of work on this and it has been evolved during that period, 7 to 10 to 15 years back, and it has been evolved and it is doing very well on this one. It is a very good uh, uh, attempt. We can make the plants to withstand by giving this. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. In, 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 in the, uh, in the uh, wilting plants, we can give this one. And it uh, controls the uh, you are uh, temperature, leaf temperature. It is, uh, say, you are, you are having all the protection, like any, even you have got a practice even for dad up to give you a uh, weight wash or lime wash. Similar thing, what we are recommending on this. And other material like kaolin and other things we tried, we could not get that similar result. This is uh, really giving very good result. Even the Wilting plants can be made all right till it will not get scorched and it will withstand the drought till we get the result of shower. Now, as I said, we have got the, the problem of berry borer more. And the only thing is, I, as I said, we should do the gleaning collection, in the, at least in the blocks where we expected high crop and now we are not released means then there is a lot of gleanings are available. Those crops at least we can try to collect so that we will release some crop. Secondly, we will avoid berry borer incident. That is another thing, major important thing is to control the measure of berry borer for future. We should give, do the gleaning collection is the one. Then we can uh, put on the trap now. Once you get the rainfall or irrigation, Within 20 days, we recommend that. Actually, we recommend about 10 traps per acre. Even if you put six traps per acre, but it has to be changed the place of uh, within one acre. We have to change at the 10 to 15 days interval so that you are able to trap the beetles emerge from the leftover fruits and the uh, gleanings. And we are, it is very effective in the absence of uh, any fruits till August. It works very well. The river trap, the broca trap works very well. And you have a very good control on the berry borer for the future crop. And uh, to control the mealybug, we have already how the, the parasitoid is being supplied from all our regional stations. And you can purchase it from our regional station and release it. It's a very simple technique. Just to, you have to take it in that vial and release it, open it in the field, and you get the good control. See, leptomatrix, dactylopi is very good, and you can use it very well. 
and the, the institute is ready to give you any number only thing is you have to indent it well in advance so that you, they have the sufficient time to supply to you on time the other alternative is that whatever the spray which i suggested you can add any one of this thing chloroperipos uh, 20c or roger or tough god dimethyate you can add to that and spray so that you get a good relief and you know this view because already you no know crop is existing at present it will not cause you any problem and it will be also helpful chloropyrifos is helpful the one which is already you have got lot of beribora which will be controlled also so in, you have got two things in this one by giving this spray you control the beetles of beribora as well as you control the milliba and for young coffee i think the half the dosage that what we recommended is uh, being given and it can be it's not a specific period or anything that we can go ahead with that spray and do it and uh, we can get the re- desired control on that only thing is that we can have on need based we can give the spray before plan uh, young coffee shows any wilting now as i said that we have come across very severe incidents of uh, leaf rust particularly especially in the plantation where we have got old material like cowberry 759 selection 9 and even some of the hdt cutoi which is not uh, good in the uh, uh, material wise uh, there is a problem uh, is showing some leaf rust incidents so the spray of the suggested spray is that with the count of combination can be given and uh, to withstand the drought in this one like chandragiri where we don't have much of a problem of leaf rust we can give this spray and uh, have the, uh, the to withstand the drought and uh, this spray can be given for all the plants after the blossom it gives a very good uh, impact one is it activate the new shoot second setting will be very good thirdly that uh, the the uh, leaf rust control after the blossom what you have it is controlled very well uh, in the, the in the plants so it is uh, having a very good uh, impact on the productivity now coming to the regulation share regulation you know as our uh, colleague was uh, uh, telling that only because of the exposure we have got the temperature is high when you want the crop production we cannot have i i shade okay. so the only thing is we have to balance it one is that when we actually we want to do is a uh, correct period is just pre monsoon that means may june but that time you don't get what the shade loppers very difficult to get many of the plantation miss the bus because we are not able to get the people on time so the question is we cannot take a chance factor going up to may june so question is now we have to think about doing it immediately after the irrigation or the natural shower we can think about robusta which can withstand the high light intensity but we cannot do it for arabica arabica can be done only in the month of may june after receipt of shower so that there may not be much more period or a longer drought period during june july so we have to do it uh, in the late uh, may so that we will avoid stembora because you know with the high temperature the multiplication of stembora incidence is very high and uh, you may lose the plant so economic value of arabica coffee you know when we lose one plant 10 years productivity is gone we cannot take a chance factor whereas in uh, robusta we don't have much of a pest problem okay we can manage it if you are having a sufficient moisture and this one we can go ahead with after the irrigation backing irrigation now only thing is i uh, say that we have to apply the fertilizer on time and then make it that 
once you do the shave regulation we cannot do any application of fertilizer because it takes longer time to clear the field all over the the logs have to be removed and all that it is very difficult to apply the fertilizer it takes more time when you delay the fertilizer and we apply in the month of june there is no sunshine to utilize it then subsequently july month high rainfall or august month high rainfall soil saturation limiting the uh, uh, root activity naturally it is not being utilized by properly by the plants so it is better that you do it early in the month of may so that you are able to utilize the applied fertilizer within april may so those who are applying only two fertilizer it is better to do it in april may and when is post monsoon but who are doing is three application i prefer always one is with uh, irrigation or immediately after the receipt of natural shower second is before may so that two application before the monsoon if you are applying your production uh, cropping wood is going to be high for the next year rather than doing it in the month of july august as a second application because it has become a question mark for the recently for the past four five years always our rainfall pattern has changed from june to july july to august now so invariably we are getting high rainfall at the time before applying utilization is going to be low secondly the third application has to be applied within a month period another limitation another thing is post monsoon operations are more to do the job is very difficult so better that two applications are done before monsoon and the other application is done on the third third manure on the post monsoon period then the the so hence it is better to adopt this one for the climate change previously we used to always insist upon the immediately the first operation after the harvest is only shell regulation because we were sure that we used to get in 70s and mm. 80s march first week blossom shower but nowadays that is not a scenario we have to change to the climate now climate change and it is better that we adopt to that and be safe on that so that we are getting high productive now this is what i was telling about uh, the we have to apply the next slide please uh, apply the first split doses at the time of blossom irrigation so that we are improving the set as well as the wood if uh, there is a delay in applying uh, for a blossom irrigation at least we can apply in the backing only thing is you have to increase the quantum of backing irrigation little higher than that if you are usually giving back irrigation only 1 inch you might give 2 inches to utilize the applied fertilizer fully by the plant however we have to delay the we should not delay the application applying in june july it is your fertilizer use efficiency is drastically reduced fixation is high plant activity root activity is low so avoid that now to conclude i just say we should not delay giving blossom irrigation for want of some other thing like uh, pepper harvest and other things we should not as i said immediately after harvest giving the specific period of uh, gap making the flower bed to have the maturity go for the irrigation try to finish it up within first part night of february march so that you are safe and you get a better blossom and fruit set and the backing has to be given from the date of irrigation blossom irrigation for 20 days is the thing so that you will not get much any damage and if in absence of backing irrigation we can go for the foliar spray then insulation of rocket trap this time is very important to control your beribora insurance and collection of gleanings and leftover fruits then release of parasites you can indent and get it done and it is a very easy job just to no worker is required anybody can do that and we can manage the mealybug incidents and uh, lastly that this if it all require you can go for the chlorophyll spray combination along with the recommended dosage of 
polio spray. With this, I conclude. I thank all of you for patient listening, and give. I thank uh, Dr. Jagdisha, CEO and Secretary, Coffee Board, and uh, Dr. Sanil Kumar, and all my colleagues who have helped me to have this presentation. I thank one and all, and also uh, my grower friends. I am meeting for the uh, after a long period in this uh, webinar. I thank every one of you, and uh, have the anything, anytime you can contact me. If at all, I can have, be helpful for giving you some suggestion. It will be very, very uh, happy thing for me to share my knowledge. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Venkatramanan sir. It has yeah. been a very practical presentation. You have uh, practically covered all the aspects of planters because you have you are very much with them every day and uh, very much being aware of their plantation conditions. You have also brought to the forefront what different planters have been facing in different conditions. You have covered up the aspect of how well you should do the sprinkler irrigation. You have also informed what should be done and how well it should be done. And what should not be done? You have covered the You have also informed the importance of B uh, and propagate. I mean, installing apiary in the plantations, sir. Uh, it was practically everything in one uh, lecture, and it has been so informative. Uh, we have been very much benefited both the scientist community and the planters community equally, and uh, uh, indeed very proud of you, sir. You have uh, you are you were with the board and you still continue to be with the plantations. Thank you very much. And uh, now we leave the floor open for discussions. Uh, discussions. We have the scientists here. We have uh, Venkatramanan sir. So you can please come up with your. Uh, we have about uh, fifteen minutes time wherein we can do the discussions. The planters, please. Hello, Dr. Jinnah. And uh, this. Uh... Planters are also welcome to give their comments about this webinar, the way it has, uh, um, you know, we have, we have taken it forward. And also, you know, we are also planning to have many more webinars like this, not only on coffee and also on various topics and various associated crops also in the days to come. So I would like to hear from the planters, first of all, about this webinar and also, of course, about their doubts on the presentation made and any other subject related to the present problems in coffee. Thank you. Kindly share the Dr. Vegetarman's numbers and mobile numbers so it's easier for us to record and keep in touch for the necessity. Thank you. So Ramanan sir, you can just give your number, sir. And just It's not, not, not audible, sir. It is not you audible. Probably, you Nina, have... I can share the number, I think. Of yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am writing we it. Can, we can, uh, um, uh, Somshekar, I'm... Dr. I'm sharing. you can put it yes, in sir. the chat box. Yes, yes, sir. Sure, sir. I am doing that. You can, yeah, so that, that. All, yes. the, all the planters can have his number. All yes, sir. Yes. Sure, sir. I am sharing Thank the you, contact number. So okay. basically, the DOT line is not at all operative. Kindly share your numbers. It will be very helpful whenever uh, we will not disturb. Whenever required, we will keep in touch. It will be very helpful for us, sir. Please. All your Venkat numbers. Ramanan, sir, you are, you are muted. Venkatramanan, sir, kindly unmute and talk, sir. No, still under mute only, sir. Sir, we are not... So I'm sure that Rubak, can you try to unmute him? Maybe you can do it from the no, host no. end. We can't, madam. Sir, unmute should be done by sir only. We can't, sir only had to do. Unmute, sir. Sir, you are muted, you mic, sir. Ramanan, sir. Are you able to hear? Yes, yes, sir. Now we can. Now, now it's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you can. Yes, sir. My yes. number is nine double four eight six 
Five seven double two nine. Sir, we also shared the contact number of Five Zero Double Nine, sir, in the chat box. Okay. Please save the contact numbers. Okay. So, Doctor Somshakar. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, our planters also putting their comments in the chat box. Yeah. Can you read it out so that you know we can have the interaction? Sir, right? first we'll take the direct question from the planters, sir, followed okay, by fine. chat box. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, dear friends, you are welcome to give your. You know, you ask your clarifications, whatever it is. Yeah, this is the uh, of Kalsa Estate, sir. It's a very good uh, interaction with all your people in a remote uh, places. I am in Bangalore now. In spite of it, attending office work, it is very helpful. And uh, thanks a lot for your connecting this program right on time. And uh, really, one question, sir, like, see, basically, uh, uh, what Saad has told that Dr. Venkraman has said that immediately after uh, second uh, backing, uh, within 20 days, we can go for a this uh, foliar spray. So even if we don't get that the climate conditions is about 35, 36 degree also, it will be viable. We can able to go for uh, uh, this foliar spray. The uh, leaf will not be get scratches. Nothing, not, nothing will happen to that. And you can go ahead with that. It is very helpful even in the absence of rainfall. Another 45 days, I mean, sorry, another 28 days, it can withstand the drought. In the absence of any rainfall further. Sir, to add to this is Sandeep here uh, from Killara Estates at uh, Just uh, I wanted to put first of all, let me thank you for this, uh, you know, great presentation. I have a lot of questions, uh, but uh, however, uh, you know, I don't think, uh, you know, uh, I would want to take everybody's time. Uh, I'll anyway, just, uh, you know, ask a few. Uh, ones which we could clarify and maybe personally I could talk to you. The, this is in connection to the spray that uh, our friend had already mentioned. Uh, now, you had mentioned that, uh, you know, potassium and nitrogen, they actually control the openings of uh, stomata. Now, is it possible, uh, I think in your uh, recommendation, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you had given urea, single superphosphate, uh, MOP, zinc sulfate. These were the nutrients. So, uh, if we are looking at uh, only potassium and nitrogen, would, uh, you know, potassium nitrate uh, be okay? Or uh, since it's in the nitrate form, would it be a deterrent to this activity? Actually, it is an excellent question. We have got an alternate uh, spray. For this, actually, you know, potassium nitrate is uh, directly available for and directly helpful also. The question is, we have got some strategy, it should be a minimum cost. For that only it has been recommended urea, SSP, MOP, and zinc sulfate. What? Number one. Number two is SSP has got the calcium base, which is calcium, the yeah. integrity of the membrane is very important during the drought period. That helps because we tried all other uh, uh, water-soluble phosphorus, which did not help us in giving this desired result on drought tolerance. Only this um, single superphosphate has given. That is another reason why this combination. But alternately, now you can have the, instead of going only with the uh, potassium nitrate, it is 13045. Instead of that, we always prefer 1 kg of 19 all, 19, 19, 19, 1 kg of 13045. And to add to that, we can have zinc as a rexolin or we have called combi flat, which has got 4 to 5 percent of zinc and all other micronutrients. It's very helpful. Along with that, you can have planophix. It's very good. Only thing is cost factor is a little higher than this urea SSP combination. Okay, Th thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. Appreciate okay, sir, your response. Can you repeat it, sir? Can you repeat it that uh, 13045 and 19 all another one? Third yeah, 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 I, 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 the Xolene is, <laughs> is not available. You can have one, another one, uh, this one, combi fat is available in the market. Uh, okay. It is equally good with all the uh, micronutrients because other formulations are available, but it has got a certain low level or certain of the micronutrients only available. Whereas this has got all the micronutrients and very useful also. 
Okay. You have okay. got any other spreader? You can use it, or yeah, that is, if you are using only Epson, it is only 60 ml is sufficient. If you are okay, using other you. Uh, anything, any spreader from wetting agent, best one that you can reduce your cost. That uh, I mean, that one is really very good. No, no second way about it, but only is question of cost factor, nothing else. <laughs> Can we share your numbers sir, so that we can keep in touch? Yeah, do we share it in the chat box, sir? Please uh, okay. check it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sir. I can yeah, for the benefit of the planters, I will repeat the content. So, what's uh, said that is a uh, potassium nitrate 13045 1 kg, 19 all 1 kg, and rexolin uh, that's 100 grams, along with that, plant fix 50 ml uh, should be mixed in 200 liters of water, and you have to spray in the plants. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, I have another question. Uh, the other question is you mentioned that uh, during the blossom irrigation uh, it is highly recommended uh, whether if you want to push yields uh, better uh, you know setting better flower set and uh, to add a fertilizer uh, which i am assuming is a soil uh, you know based fertilizer Hi. now uh, i don't know i may be wrong uh, in my you know understanding uh, since we are coming out of uh, the drought period, uh, prolonged drought period, and during the first uh, irrigation, which is the blossom irrigation, uh, we are inducing a lot of moisture. Now, since we are having such a long period, my understanding was that uh, the root activity would have gone into a dormancy phase. Uh, and if we add a fertilizer during the blossom irrigation, the absorption is not going to be uh, extremely high and because of this uh, we had uh, actually you know uh, moved it to a uh, backing but uh, i think you have contradicted it i don't know whether uh, you know the statement that i'm making is true i would just want you to clarify on this sir. yeah it's a very good question because you know this question was i had it for 25 years back when i re started recommending this one along with the blossom irrigation sir many persons at this uh, high temperature with the low soil moisture set with the low activity of root system are we having the beneficial actually now the question is that we are not going to apply the entire area the area which we, you can irrigate per day, how many shift you are able to do, what an extent of area, you are going to only apply the fertilizer that time. Number one is, if you are starting your program, the irrigation by morning 6 o'clock, the previous evening, for that shift alone, the fertilizer is supplied. It is not exposed to the sunlight or allowing this one to get volatilized and it is being utilized. So, based on the requirement of covering the acreage per, year, per day, we are allocating the workers to apply for that area and subsequent for the next day morning, what is the shift to be done for that only we will be applying the fertilizer. And secondly that, the, the one when you are applying and giving irrigation, it goes to the subsoil. And even when you think about the root system and all, maybe that the top layer might have got some of the feeder roots will not be very active. But it will get activated after the rain, uh, your irrigation. But there is many of the, some of the nutrients will go down and it will be utilized by the plant. And nothing is going to be wasted on that. And secondly, you are coming back again within 20 days, another irrigation, it will be completely utilized. And we are practically seeing very high uh, response to this, rather than applying it to only for backing or later after the receipt of uh, April shower. You see a lot of difference. 
you will get convinced actually many of the uh, uh, growers this time they have seen that uh, this one unbelievable uh, growth when they applied along with the irrigation last year and they have seen the result this year and many adopted the whole estate previously they were using only few acres they were doing an experiment even the same question was asked and asked them to do it on trial basis and this year they are convinced about the result so it is up to you to do that and then there is nothing you going to be lost in this one and it is going to be utilized because you are giving only optimum rainfall it is not going to give high rainfall to get it washed out it will be in the soil and it will be utilized within a period of 30 days so now supposing we uh, I, I, before i ask this question now which would be your recommended uh, fertilizer i think it would be a high a quick release one uh, yeah, which is I, your I, 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 that's a good question because we have done lot of studies on the this blossom and the requirement of uh, phosphorus especially our uh, radioactive isotope studies with the uh, bark bombay atomic research institute with the ccra we have developed and found that uh, the water soluble phosphorus is highly helpful at the time of uh, the blossom so we always feel the urea ssp uh, mop combination is very good and equally good uh, urea dap mop combination then comes your 202013 with uh, mop then comes your 102626 with mop so these are all one which is really helpful in getting you the required this one nothing to uh, lose and you get the benefit anything any combination can be applied and supposing we have limed the soils uh, uh, then would that be a deterrent because we are adding a lot of phosphorus uh, 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 you are right uh, actually no there are two issues one is that we generally we don't recommend any lime application or dolomite application uh, during summer months because there is a limitation on the correction of the soil when there is no moisture when you apply above the soil it never corrects your ph in the subsoil number one the best period of applying the lime correction for this one is the after the last to dosage of fertilizer applied in the month of september october then giving 40 days 45 days gap after getting three inches rainfall after the application coupled with the 45 days gap you apply the lime or the dolomite definitely it is going to correct your soil package because the moisture is adequate and correct the soil, moisture, um, uh, soil package and the plants will be ready by March, number one. Number two is, if suppose if you are applying the, uh, uh, you have to apply the lime or dolomite now, the best period is first you apply the fertilizer, give the blossom irrigation, then give backing irrigation. You already completed three inches by that, after uh, applying the fertilizer. Give another 10 days time, go for the lime correction but that is not the ideal situation because again your second manure will get delayed so for robusta you have to do this whereas arabica you don't have any alternate except applying that for arabica coffee only in january february after uh, completion of crop harvest after completion of gleanings only you have to apply then we apply our uh, fertilizer only after receipt of natural shower in the month of April or May. But whereas when we want to improve the productivity of uh, robusta coffee, we always prefer to give the application or lime correction or pH correction has to be done in the end of the year, November, December, and then go for the application on time, your fertilizer during February, March. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. Good morning, sir. This is Nafis here. Uh, thanks for the excellent uh, presentation and a lot of input, a lot of takeaway value, actually. Thank you very much. Very, very, very good seminar. One, one small question is like, uh, I, I irrigated my uh, plantation. I started on 20th February and now uh, backing shower is under progress area wise. And now 
during the baking shower, I have applied a calcium nitrate of era, 100 grams per uh, robusta plant and 50 grams per uh, uh, arabica plant. Is that appropriate, sir? Okay, I, I think the, uh, the calcium nitrate is a very good uh, application, particularly required during the summer months. It is very good. Applying alone is not helpful. If you had applied along with the other manure, it might have been good. Only question is the cost factor is limiting there. As you know, your calcium nitrate cost is very high. Yeah, certainly. Okay, that yeah. is the only limiting. And we recommend uh, that is whoever is able to afford to that, we are recommending at least 50 kg per acre. We are recommending in one application in the year. And that period is also correct. Usually we apply either along with the blossom or along with the backing or uh, pre-monsoon. You can do that. It's very useful because the calcium nitrate is one of the things will really help you because it has got also zinc. Is an additional one in that. Boron also. Yeah, boron also is there. So it is very helpful on that and really very good one. Only question is affordability. Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Yes, sir, I have, I have in stock uh, Sampurna 19 all also, but then I stopped that and uh, I started applying calcium nitrate. Can after giving a gap of another 20 days, can I uh, apply a Sampurna also? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. You can but do that. Plasm, Absolutely. Plasm no problem. is excellent. You know, yeah. What happened? 19 all as a Sampurna, you require more water. That is the only thing. Okay. Yes. Because it's not uh, easily soluble and this is not taken up, this one. You require little more water for that. That's the only thing, limitation. You can do one thing at the blossom itself. You can give some purna and make it. Again, you have four and a half inches or three and a half inches rainfall and you can do that. Only thing is when you apply now, the water is going to be a limiting problem for you to utilization. Yes. If you are getting adequate rainfall and then going ahead with that, it's very good. No problem. Yes. But I, we hope that we will get good rain for yeah. the blossom. Are, uh, the blossom is excellent, as we did, as we said in the last year. Initial uh, uh, irrigation itself, I had applied the manure, and uh, I see the result now. Eleven nodes and all that, like uh, wonderful blossom. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that input, sir. Really, it. Uh, yeah, no, no. Yes. Everybody is picking high crop with that application and without any inhibition. If you are doing only question is practicality. Yes. That time you have the, the other harvest is going on, other pepper harvest is going on, so many other programs getting this one. Oh, sorry, one second. Field is not ready for applying that uh, you have to clean it up or suckers are there in the plant. You have to do uh, desuckering and apply the fertilizer. These are some of the practical problem you have got in that application. Yes. But if you are able to get a wonderful result. Yeah. Except the thing is, what I didn't do this time is uh, cleaning because I did not get the labor. So. I know, I know, I know. I know. And then irrigation know, is happening, applying the is happening, I harvested silver uh, oaks also. So, yeah. anyway, thank you very much, sir. Thanks what? for the uh, uh, input. Yes. I have a question. Hello? Yeah? I'm Dees Raghu from Moodigere. Yeah. You said uh, shade lopping uh, for Arabica between May and uh, June, but for, because we have uh, intercrop with pepper, we need to start from April itself. How do you balance that? I mean, because if you don't do uh, shade lopping up to 30 feet, pepper crop also will not be set. So how do you overcome this problem? Yeah, I say it's a good question. Actually, you know, we don't uh, combine the shade regulation of the block with the pepper crop. Actually, our idea is to improve the pepper crop. We always go immediately after harvest, lifting of pepper only in the shade trees which are trained with pepper. Irrespective of the block, whether that block is going to be regulated or not is a big question mark. We never do uh, for the pepper alone the any shade regulation. Here, immediately after harvesting the crop, we go for lifting of uh, uh, shade, okay, jolt, removing the jolt. We will do it immediately after harvest to improve the productivity. Provided we have some rainfall or most watering, we will go immediately. Otherwise, we will do it after the receipt of shower, immediately we will do it. So, 
don't combine any time for your paper uh, lifting of shade to your uh, regulation of the shade regulation of the block. That is some other program. This is some other program. On every tree which you have been trained with the pepper, we should have a special program to improve the productivity of pepper because very crucial, as you rightly said, it requires more light. We cannot wait up to the May because by the time May, we should get the cack in on May and June. So we always go immediately after harvest. We complete my March 31st, the harvest in pepper. And we go in April, we start our horse watering by April, and we maintain the very good uh, subsoil moisture with the compost and other things. So that's a different uh, program for pepper. Nothing to do with shade regulation of Arabica coffee. That is uh, for, to save the wisdom border, we are going with May. But the pepper wines, uh, pepper uh, wine strain, the shade trees, we have to lift it only those trees. Maybe hardly you may have 50 trees per acre. Those trees alone, we should do the lifting. Okay, regarding berry borer, Boca yeah. trap, uh, we have to start after coffee at a certain size or uh, after the irrigation, 20 days after the irrigation, as you said. Actually, but, when, when you yes. get a natural shower or, or irrigation, because the high, whole idea is that whatever eggs laid in uh, by berry borer, it will hatch up only after getting the moisture. Till that time, it doesn't uh, hatch us out. So, when you get the irrigation or natural shower, within 20 days, you go for the trap. Then only that the beetle emerges. It takes 20 days from uh, getting the water to emerge. So, during that time, you put on your trap and maintain it. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah. And the question is, uh, the stem borer, Chloroferifers are linked in. Can you do it in April first week? Swabbing? Yeah, actually, that's the best period. You, before that, you have to do your uh, number one is that you have to do the tracing and remove or destroy the infected one. If the plants have got a good crop for the, this year, you can do the wrapping as per the technology which has been uh, given to you by the board. You can do the wrapping and keep it for two years or three years, depending upon the plant condition. And if we, the one which is unproductive, you have to remove it. And the correct period of that, with, with the increased temperature, we can see the cycle will be very fast in the month of April. So the best period is you do the swabbing or spraying in the month of April. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, in one of your slides, uh, you had, uh, you know, put across the, you know, historic uh, drought uh, per year. Uh, each year, that is 120 years in some year, and uh, now yes, yes. I, I think uh, I just noticed that now yeah, yes. last last year in yes. uh, one in our plantation we had 140 days of drought before we received the first rain. Now, as a rule of thumb, what would be the you know uh, stress? Uh, uh, you know, capability of the plant. How many days of uh, drought stress can a, a robusta handle and vis a vis Arabica handle? Uh, for, uh, you know, it to have a good uh, uh, vegetative capacity and also reproductive capacity. I will, I will answer it. Hey, for example, the tolerance limit in robusta comes 110 days. It can withstand the drought 110 days, anything exceeding that, there is a reduction in the fruit set. Okay. However, since the root system is at the surface level, with the receipt of good rainfall, suppose with a gap of that, you get under one and a half inch rainfall, the recovery is very fast. So, the recovery is depending upon the quantum of rainfall or the irrigation which you give. And, and also the western facing and the eastern facing. The difference is there. And also depending upon shade pattern. So we cannot have a thumb rule for this, much, this many days, this is the thing. It's only on the location 
and the area depending upon that we can pinpoint okay this one yeah so now uh, sir 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 no. Sir, yes, Sandeep, yes, Sandeep, please. Sir. Okay, uh, yeah, so basically what you're telling is if it is on the eastern or northern slope, then the toler tolerance level will maybe increase by another 10 or 15 days, uh, even though the shade condition is uh, optimum. Now, supposing, you see, uh, for our uh, area, the thing is, uh, it is a, a very gentle slope. So, I received the sunrise and sunset on all the blocks That's so it becomes very difficult uh, to actually get any benefit of uh, you know being on eastern or western because we have a now what we uh, you know incurred last year uh, there was a you know uh, i would say 40 percent reduction in uh, yield uh, because of this 140 days of uh, you know, drought that we experienced in spite of, uh, you know, having two rounds of irrigation. Now, with such a scenario, if we adopt the lime, uh, you know, whitewash uh, in uh, January, would I be able to increase the tolerance level by another, uh, let's say, from 110 to 140 days? Uh, that's the idea. Actually, you know, when you are given blossom and backing irrigation, there is no chance to get any reduction in crop. I think there is something uh, more than that, something is wrong with your plant or the condition. Because probably you have not uh, given proper irrigation, there is chance. That means the timing and the, the stage at which it required may be improper. Second thing is that because why I said improper last year we had January rainfall. I no, we did that. we did not. I think we no, we, no, we, did we, not were, we had a mistake. Okay. Yes. Right. I agree with that. Now when you say that this one, the irrigation quantum quantum of irrigation might have been a problem. You are not given adequate moisture. So when your drought conditions are high, probably you might increase the quantum of rainfall or the irrigation. So that might have cost you spreading over of uh, blossom for three days or four days. That might have resulted less crop because the elevation of trust is already over the impact when you give the irrigation. It never comes later. Unless, unless it has got some moisture deficit. So, it may be that your water holding capacity is not good in the soil, number one. You yeah. The, the, uh... Why, you know, I said, there are some plantation, even after giving one and a half inch of rainfall, I'm repeating the irrigation on the fifth day because there is no water holding capacity in the soil. And the plant starts waiting on the sixth day or seventh day after the blossom irrigation. So, it mainly that something in that field, I prefer for you visualizing your problem, you should apply compost in a larger way. If you are applying two years continuously, at least two ton of uh, compost uh, this uh, area, where it is exposed and to improve the moisture retention in the soil, you will not get this problem of direction in the crop. The the OC level is uh, 0 0.79. Ah, that is the problem. I say, I say very indicate. Say minimum organic carbon should be two to three. You are having 0 0.7. Imagine what I said is that your water holding capacity is poor. So one year, uh, two years. Uh, Continuously, we have to add in. Uh, yeah, compost, you uh, your soil fertility. That's the only answer for you. Water holding capacity of the soil has to be improved. That is limiting your productivity. Okay. Sir, uh, if there is time, I'll ask one more question, or if there is somebody else, I'll let them. I'll yeah, give chance for the yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sir, I want to ask you one question. Yeah. 
So, what is the future of the Robusta price uh, from today as the price is uh, 14,000? <laughs> uh you have said that uh, due to the drought and uh, less rain falling foreign uh, the prices have uh, drastically increased uh, i'm shas from saklespur norway yeah now actually your question is correct you know we don't have any mathematical model to predict exactly how it is going to be it's a um, uh, it's a great question to answer but only thing is that as per the indications from the, the, the way the plantation is suffering in Vietnam, the world the demand is high and the crop coming to the market is low. So there is a tremendous increase in the price on account of demand. And another thing is that the, as per the uh, uh, World Meteorological Department's prediction, is going to be, the scenario is going to be very tough up to July, August. Okay. And how it is going to change only in the month of August, we can know. So, probably you may have to wait for that to have a correct prediction. How is going to crop next year? How is the, uh, the crop going to be the next year? Only that can answer your question, whether there will be further price rise uh, or not. At this juncture, it is very difficult to say or pinpoint anything on that. Shaz, in my pre okay. presentation, also I said that El Nino it may continue up to the April, uh, followed by the neutral phase and followed by the La Nino. We cannot be able to predict the price uh, up to August month, as uh, said. Exactly. So after uh, August only, we can be able to predict the price of this robust. <clears throat> okay. Hi, sir. Yeah, sir. Hi, this is Sandeep from Chikmangalur. Uh, sir, I actually uh, have a question. Uh, so, till last year, I have an Arabica plantation. So, till last year, I used to follow a natural farming methods, but this year, I am shifting from natural to organic. So, I have gone through your session, saw the PPT and all that. So, you know, uh, what I didn't understood is that rather than going for fertilizers, as an organic coffee planter, uh, what is the approach I should be taking? I answer you what all things that you are planning to do for organic coffee cultivation, I should know. Because there are a lot of approach and also the coffee board has given you the manual organic coffee cultivation. Which are the things that you are following, number one. Number two, how you are able to control your pest and disease is the second one. Third one, how far you are, uh, what is the age of the plant, what is the material, and all those things are required. I think that will be a specific question, especially that I can answer you later, because it requires a lot of, uh, I have to ask you the questions to answer your uh, question. Okay. okay, sir, I'll take it offline with you. Yeah, that is the best thing to do that because, you know, organic coffee cultivation in Arabica is very difficult. Number one is under the present scenario of very long drought, high temperature with high incident of stem borer, unless you have got a resistant material and good shade canopy, it, may, it is very difficult to manage it Arabica coffee. And uh, there are some high elevation area, it is possible. Only at what cost is the question mark? Okay, so and that we are balancing it. Sir, I'm no balancing doubt. it with my intercrops of vanilla and pepper. Okay, I think then I have to see other things now. <laughs> you added some more points now. So it has got a different uh, version we have to take and uh, I think it's better that we discuss it uh, separately on that. Okay, not That's in it. this corner. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, sir uh, if you would recommend a calcium based, uh, see, basically in the new, uh, you know, coffee board uh, book, uh, they are, uh, you know, calcium requirement uh, for uh, healthy growing and reprodu reproduction of the plant is around uh, 600 ppm. Now, I am having uh, blocks which are around uh, 250, 260. However, the sulfur levels are, uh, you know, optimum. 
so can you recommend uh, calcium only for the will uh, you know dolomite application itself uh, suffice or uh, should we go for a uh, you know calcium based uh, quick uh, fertilizer like uh, nitrobor or uh, any other uh, that uh, you th can think of see number one is that calcium uptake is only done by the plants as a nitrate form no other form is available to the plant and it cannot absorb and also it is little a bigger molecule always it takes longer time to get absorbed but uh, this nitrobor is really good and it is uh, helping us to do that if at all your calcium level is low you don't have any other alternative except going for a uh, nitrobor application or uh, calcinit is available as a foliar spray you can give 1 kg of uh, uh, calcinit for 200 liters of that you can equip the plant very fast okay but the thing is that there also you should know actually uh, leaf level of calcium and uh, also you have to have a testing on that and uh, and also i want you to test the what you say low level of calcium is on the soil you may to recheck it and then confirm it before going for this one because it's going to cost you uh, definitely more when you are applying nitrobor nitrobor is costly yeah yes yeah yeah that is the thing see the thing is no doubt if you are not bothered about cost you can go ahead with the application absolutely no problem it's very useful and the, the other point you asked is that whether the dolomite can apply i will mm. help you see the dolomite has got so one is the calcium carbonate or calcium oxide or magnesium carbonate and magnesium, magnesium oxide. oxide it is not available form that to the plant it should get converted into nitrate form and then get absorbed it never it happens very very slow and it is a very slow process it takes longer year number one see here that only thing is there is a possibility to correct the magnesium very fast rather than calcium okay when you apply dolomite there also there is little difficulty but uh, you get it uh, corrected magnesium little fast because when you see some yellowing when you apply dolomite there is a correction takes place and the uh, greenness of the leaves will be very high and you can see the immediate result. whereas in calcium it is very difficult unless you apply in nitrate form so oh. your option is one is a calcinic a yara product is available for the end coffee we recommend half kg for uh, uh, yielding plants one kg and similarly you can have nitrobor application you can apply two application or three application depending upon your finance that's the only thing it's very good so what you're recommending is uh, primarily uh, the there may be a discrepancy between the soil level of calcium and the uh you know level of calcium within the plant uh, yeah exactly so, because you know why i asked i i may ask some other thing in the question when you jyoti ji maine wo inquiry kiya hai Cal calcium is less you that the young leaves showing marginal yellowing all young leaves whereas your old leaves will be intact marginal yellowing you will see in uh, young leaves that is the indication of your calcium problem mm -hmm. if once you are not getting that problem i don't think there is a level of correction is required okay but that only i said we should do the leaf analysis and in the in the leaf analysis uh, would that be a huge variance uh, see because uh, i i have given it for leaf analysis as well the results i awaited i i, I think we might, i am out to see the uh, results and then talk to you about that better that so, you can send me later sanjeev okay. where where the soil samples have been analyzed from our lab no no the yours is very far uh, so i so gave to tata, tata what tata happens here. what happens in most of the cases is if your if your ph levels are between 5.5 to 6 so normally you don't see such kind of uh, low calcium content in the soil what dr ramanan sir is also telling is yara or uh, other things there are water soluble fertilizers by giving that you may not be able to increase the calcium content of the soil it may be, it may fulfill the immediate need of the plant for uh, <laughs> rectifying the soil calcium and magnesium content normally we apply 
live or dolomite or uh, the fertilizers uh, slow uh, releasing fertilizers like min shakti these are the mm. compounds which can be called as soil conditioners which normally mm. will enhance the calcium or magnesium content of the soil and uh, fulfill the cation cap exchange capacity of the soil this is important and uh, regarding the leaf nutrient content you are asking uh, normally we see high amount of calcium and magnesium in the leaf, even though if you have low amount of calcium in the soil, this may be due to the ionic balance, what normally we encounter in the soil between calcium, magnesium and potassium uh, uh, ions. When you maintain your pH between 5.5 to 6.5, uh, six, uh, 5.5 to 6, normally you don't encounter the deficiency of calcium or magnesium in soil. Okay. I think maybe, uh, you know, the result just came in. So I was, uh, it could be true because what is the available form or non-available form, we don't know. Is that... the, because the PS levels are adequate, uh, all are at 6.1, 6 6.2. Kind uh, of, non, uh, in that case, normally calcium will be in the sufficient range only. Okay. Th thank you, sir, so much. So, if uh, any further questions are there, please call to uh, Dr. Venkatraman sir or to me. I shared one, the my contact details. Yeah, yeah. Sir, one, uh, sir, sir, one sir, one sir, I have one more clarification, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, regarding as Sandeep was also uh, mentioning, a lot of people are having the apprehension of applying fertilizer before uh, giving irrigation, sir. Uh, the, uh, normally, we see this among the planters as well as. Uh, my opinion also may be because normally what uh, happens when the first blossom shower comes is immediately there will be a surge of uh, activity of microbes. Uh, it may be bacteria, fungi or actinomyces. A lot of activity we see immediately after rains or immediately after the first uh, blossom showers. So normally uh, there will be surge in the nutrient content of the soil also. Uh, by applying uh, these fertilizers before uh, giving irrigation, you know, uh, don't you think uh, it will uh, hamper the no. activity of microbes, soil microbes? Uh, Nagaraj, Dr. Nagaraj, we are still in the old concept. You have not developed any data. Yeah, yeah. Please, wait, wait. Please develop the data for your assumption. Yeah. But we are seeing a practical result. See the plant's condition. Then you talk. Go for the analysis before and after. after. Come back to me. I have seen the analysis report. You don't see that. You get the analysis report before applying and after applying and the field which has been applied and the growth pattern, canopy development and come back to me as a overall. I, I and do. Also, and also you take up the microbe studies. Come back with the data. Then arrive at your point rather than at present commenting on that. Okay? No, it's not commenting, sir. It's uh, not commenting. Your, your assumption, your assumption requires some statistics, I mean, some data collection. Okay. Now we are seeing the results in the field level. Please develop the data to say it should not be applied. Uh, definitely, definitely, sir. We are at it. Uh, we are uh, doing that. Then, then we will talk that about that because I have seen the result and the, uh, after the application, how we improvement in the status of the nutrient. Both leaf energy and this one, it was tested in NTS, not your lab. I know what it is. Okay. Based on the data I am talking about, please develop your data and come back to me. And for conversion also, it takes uh, some time, sir. All right. I agree with you, all your theoretical points. Please come out with the data. Right? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. people who are have, normally, the people uh, with the one or 1.5 inches of irrigation, uh, they go for blossom. And uh, for blossom, another one inch. Uh, that, is it that, any hard that, uh, recommending that, uh, this uh, during uh, backing irrigation time, sir? It is. That's what I give an option. It is for them to do that. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. results are good, but what happened in backing? Your question of irrigation is going to be limited. The utilization of fertilizer use efficiency is less. When you give first application, after that, uh, that uh, two inches, another two and a half inches, three and a half inches makes a lot of difference in the absorption of the nutrients. When you give backing and there is going to be a gap, there is no rainfall, your utilization uh, level is going to be minimized. That's what I observed with that analysis data. Okay. 
you please come out with the certain of the thing you take it up and come out with the result and then let us see review it okay so sir, sir similarly which would you suggest sir going for foliar nutrients or lime application for drug what? mitigating drug you see how do you apply when drought is there uh, fertilizer application no no not fertilizer sir foliar 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 versus foliar versus lime this thing uh, spray uh, oh lime see, lime spray has got its own limitation in the sense it can withstand for 30 days or 28 days when you have got it's a reflector whereas when you have the npk spray it also activates the flower bed development and the canopy development. When you give as a foliar, it has got a better effect than the lime application alone. So when you consider the yield data, what we generated was much higher in the NPK uh, zinc sprayed uh, plants compared to the your uh, lime sprayed uh, plants. That is only to uh, minimize the drought effect and uh, be done with that. Whereas here, you have got the nutrients which have got into the system has helped to help the crop. And even helped the development of uh, flower bed initiator to attain the maturity. That way it is more helpful than compared to lime application. That's a very good question. So here again, sir, uh, we did some uh, some analysis. Uh, Patil also knows this. Recently, we analyzed the NPK content of your uh, foliar nutrient uh, solution after uh, mixing zinc, phosphorus, and uh, SSP uh, and urea. Uh, I think we got a good recovery of uh, nitrogen in the solution as, as well as uh, potassium in the solution. But when it comes to zinc and phosphorus, there is heavy uh, minimum quantity of, uh, we are we were supposed to get about 0.1% zinc, but we got only 0.01%, sir. And similarly, phosphorus, we were supposed to get about 0.08%, but uh, in the cell uh, analysis, we got 0.1%. I think I, something I, I, is happening. I one yeah. thing, uh, uh, Nagaraj, I think there is something wrong with the this one, what do you say, because the same question came when we started recommending there was a question and, and uh, Dr. Professor Uday Kumar helped me in his lab to get the analyzed and uh, with the help of uh, chemistry at GKBK. And we found a very good result. The same apprehension was there at that time. I will try to get that data and send it to you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Data available. Available on that. Because the same question was raised and it was cleared by with the help of Professor Uday Kumar. This okay. this uh, this we did recently, sir. Probably one week. Hey, all right, all right. But it, this question came that time itself. Okay, I will just uh, try to. Only thing is, I don't know whether I'm able to trust that uh, data or not. Let me try. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one more suggestion, sir. Please, uh, please conduct this uh, program in a very frequently. In I mean, uh, uh, at least uh, once in a two months. It will be very helpful, very knowledgeable. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, envision our uh, all our uh, databases and we can share yes. with all the planners. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. The coffee board has taken a very good uh, initiative for conducting this program. Please continue it. That's my humble request. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank, thank you for your suggestion, sir. So, in fact, uh, and there is a team, sir, actually, to uh, conduct this webinar. So, one of the team members is Dr. Somshekar himself. Yes, Probably we will take it forward, sir. Thank you for your wonderful suggestion. Yeah, and also, definitely we are sure. And we sure. Also, yeah, yes. definitely, definitely. We'll also be, you know, including experts like Dr. Raman and, and various uh, experts in different fields also. That is how we are envisaging yeah, to have next, such next year, next next to things is the weed control, sir. How do we control organically? That's a <laughs> one topic that I want to focus. Sure, Please, sir, sir. Sure, sure. No, without any sure, chemical sir. weeding, control it. How do we sir, do keep, it? Let, let's discuss on this. Let's sir, keep it. supporting us. Definitely, you know, we are there for you. And definitely, definitely we will uh, see the heights of the day. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the meeting. Thanks. If uh, any questions uh, are there, uh, please contact uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Venter Terminal, sir, or, uh, to me. Uh, I shared already the contact details as sir has to attend uh, some uh, personal uh, this work also afternoon so we are uh, uh, concluding the uh, uh, this session
sir where is sir position sir where is at present it is residing sir dr ramanand you are address sir is that ramanand is it dr ramanand sir yes sir please i i am sir 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 we will conclude dr ramanand is his name is ramanand but he is like lord shiva there is no permanent place for him sir every time you will be traveling today in fact we have thank you sir thank you i told him sir in fact he was about to leave actually for that sake we have kept this uh, program thank in the morning originally we have planned in the evening thank and like more sir sorry because most of the time you will be in the plantations and uh, but he is placed in bangalore sir thank you sir thank you thank you very much so Sir, for no more sir. questions, can we conclude, sir? With all your, yes. you know, yeah, this, yes, yes. Shall, shall we conclude, sir? Oh, yes. Yeah, Doctor Nagar. Yes. Yeah, you can just. Uh, uh, I have one last suggestion, sir. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Shah. Yes. Please. Please. Yeah, yeah. So, so in WhatsApp group, uh, we can't discuss uh, what are the problems you are facing and all. So, can you please the do in the settings that students, so that all the people, all the growers can post what are the problems they are facing it. Already we have created one webinar. Uh, this one uh, WhatsApp group. Yeah, yeah, but we can't post anything, sir. We can't ask the yeah, questions. Yeah. So we will make you to uh, contact. So uh, I'll yes. take uh, take out the admin only can be uh, uh, do the chatting. So I'll remove that one and we will make uh, accessible to all, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so good afternoon, everybody. We have come to the end of this uh, webinar. And uh, it's really great that a lot of uh, growers have participated and uh, expressed and actively participated in the discussion. And uh, at the beginning, uh, there were about 107 or 108 participants were there. Of course, now also we see around 60 participants. This shows that uh, the topic is very interesting and it has given uh, very good uh, practical knowledge to the growers about the irrigation and mitigating the drought. Uh, in this uh, uh, Discussion uh, with with our request, uh, Dr. Ramanan sir, Joint Director of Research X Coffee Board, has uh, come forward uh, come forward and he has presented his uh, experience uh, in this uh, session about the mitigating of drought and uh, time of irrigation and to irrigate all those things. And he has also suggested us to come out with more, more data uh, in the in this field. So definitely we will be at it, sir. And I, on behalf of CCRI and on behalf of the webinar organizers, I thank you, sir, for uh, sparing your time, valuable time, and uh, sharing your experiences and enlightening all of us in this uh, webinar. Thank you, sir. So, similarly, I thank uh, Somshekar Patil and Zina uh, for uh, making this webinar a success. And uh, I thank... Uh, Director of Research also, he is uh, always encouraging this type of uh, discussions. And uh, similarly, uh, CEO Coffee Board and uh, especially I should remember uh, President uh, Chairman Coffee Board, uh, Dinesh sir, has also very much uh, given uh, his uh, suggestion to conduct uh, this uh, important topic on uh, irrigation, which is uh, very essential uh, in the present scenario. I thank all, uh, all of them for... Uh, their support and I thank our uh, participants, especially uh, I saw our, uh, unfortunately he has left, I think uh, Umesh Chandra was there, he was a very progressive planter and uh, MSCAG craft physiology. I wanted to ask about his opinion yeah. also, unfortunately he has left now. I, 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 uh, saw, I thank I, Umesh I Chandra and uh, our Krishnananda was also there, they are also, they're all very practical coffee growers, I thank Krishnananda for joining this. Uh, similarly, I take this opportunity to thank uh, all the participants, especially Sandeep. A lot, uh, definitely, you have a lot of questions. Do visit CCRI and let us have a discussion. And uh, you send your soil samples to CCRI. We will try to see what, uh, how best uh, this can be analyzed and interpretation can be done. As said by Dr. Ramanan, a lot of uh, changes needs to be done in our recommendation also. Probably all your suggestions and your experience would help us also to fine tune our recommendations. Uh, finally, I thank uh, one and all for this uh, attending this webinar and making this a very 
success thank you and i thank uh, dr d uh, ds uh, raghuzar he was also he has asked a lot of questions uh, on uh, shared this thing he was also very senior bsag uh, or libini and a very progressive planter thank you sir for uh, joining this thank you one and all thank you thank you very much thank you sir okay thank, thank you, you sir. okay very nice thank you thank you thank you thank you i take leave of you thank you very nice sir, bye thank you thank, thank you, thank you sir okay bye uh, with all your permission so we are uh, closing the uh, webinar yes uh, yes, yes. Yes. yes yes thank you sir thank you very much